Let's see, that's me. All right, and we're live. So that's me, and let's see if I can get the rest of the... Uh, <laughs> there we go. All right, that should be working. There we go. Okay, so now we are live. So welcome to Upturn Table. And again, we are playing Star Trek Adventures. So this week, the uh, adventure is called A Cry from the Void. And I'm Jeremy, and I'll be running the game. And with me today are Matt, Will, and Terry. Hey, guys. Hello. Hello. Hey. All right. And we have sound this week, so that's a good thing. Bonus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's not just some tokens on a VTT. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So are we all set? So, yeah, every, everyone's back. We have our uh, commander back from the last adventure. We rendezvoused. Here. Yes. And uh, yeah, so. everything's okay, guys. Oh, I'm back. So, so would should Mendez be on the ship, uh, or on the on the bridge, or should we? Uh, <laughs> should we should we uh, throw him out into space, or no? Should he? You're uh, <laughs> your helmsman, uh, right? So yeah, he, he was, he's backup. He might okay, need him. okay, you might need him. Okay, that's true. All right, we'll keep his. He's just gonna stand over next to the wall like you know the X's yeah. always do <laughs> right stand don't, off camera until you're needed no i think i think we're literally sitting there next to each other and I'm like you should up you should up. No, you should up. <laughs> nice all right day shift uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay so we'll we'll start with a little captain's log as you do so this is Captain Paiji of the USS Mugato. So uh, Captain's Log, Stardate 53879.78. The last six weeks have been spent meticulously cataloging systems in the far reaches of the Alpha Quadrant. So far, the only thing of interest has been the discovery of a pre-warp civilization on a second planet orbiting LV-714, and the crew is getting restless. My chief science officer, oh, I don't know who that is, um, my chief uh, engineer, <laughs> will say, um, my chief uh, engineer requested permission to investigate the culture further, but Starfleet insisted that we continue with our mission cataloging worlds. Perhaps when this mission is complete, we can return. So it's been a long, uh, kind of boring uh, mission so far on the USS Mugato. You're you're just cataloging, cataloging worlds in the uh, uh, Alpha Quadrant, the various systems that you're finding, and uh, this is just becoming very day to day. So uh, there'll be some chance for a little bit. So when you're you're off uh, off duty, there may be uh, uh, a chance for some kind of recovery and relaxation. So give me some sort of idea what your characters like to do when they're off duty. Uh, is there anything on the ship that they find particularly rejuvenating or, uh, what, uh, what's their routine when they're, uh, when they're not at, on the bridge? I, th I think, uh, I think Ute, uh, logs in his time in like nice, tranquil holodeck, like, simulation just like you know like bubbling brooks no one around no voices letting a little his head clear of all the the crazy non telepaths who don't know how to <laughs> control their emotional outbursts just isolating himself hmm, so nice. he does a lot of downtime and then i think he splits that with like probably heading a uh if like a support group for people who like have survived like you know like the Borg incursion and stuff. That's happened already, hasn't it? Like when they attack Earth in first contact? Or is that later? Is that in the future? Has he seen the future? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's 2376, so I think I think we're in the midst of... Uh... Let me check. Yeah, because I, I just brought it up here. It's 2373. So, okay, yes. So I think that that's another thing that he, yes. he heads a... Uh, a uh, it's not online, right? But basically, he <laughs> meet, meets with people like once a week and sees how everyone's doing because he always tries to think of himself as supporting the crew. And the crew goes beyond our ship. It's all of Star. Mm. It's everyone. Very nice. But mostly sitting in the holiday, listening to, to Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> nice. How about Ensign McAndrews? 
Uh, I spent a lot of time in the holodeck uh, racing uh, oh. mid-50s era Ferraris in uh, formula races. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, roaring crowds simulated and, uh, you know, close open wheel racing. Excellent. Safety protocols on or off? <laughs> oh. uh, well, I mean, off if we can get away with it, for sure. <laughs> yeah, you've been reprimanded a few times <laughs> for your for your behavior, for your settings on the holodeck. Can you set it to, like, low? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, if I get thrown from the car, I want to land in a big, like, like thing of pillows. But other than that, <laughs> I'm all the Nice. And how about Lieutenant Stark? Uh, Lieutenant Stark probably spends most of his time in this ship's version of 10 forward. And oh, nice. uh, plays a lot of uh, 4D chess, I imagine. Mm, excellent. Very good. And the Andorian Ale. Ah, yes. <laughs> excellent. Okay, so yeah, you've, you've been able to survive kind of this... Uh, uh, this monotonous uh, schedule, and you're hoping that something uh, something interesting comes along. And so during your shift, uh, one of your shifts on the bridge, just doing some routine scanning, um, you are uh, approaching yet another uh, system to survey, and you are uh, receiving the uh, a ship starts to receive the communications officer. Uh, Lieutenant uh, Lilith uh, receives a very uh, a very uh, overwhelming uh, signal on the uh, a subspace uh, signal on the uh, communication system. So um, if you if she wants to kind of figure out what what exactly is happening uh, and try to interpret what this is, that will be a uh, a task, a, a kind of a, a difficult task. But you can use the uh, the ship to to handle that it's a uh, a control plus engineering and the ship can assist with communications and engineering oh she is not good at control plus engineering uh oh i mean comparatively right right uh and the ship somebody want to roll for the ship yeah communications and engineering this is difficulty three so we're starting off with... Would this fall under observation as a focus? No, because she's just trying to figure out. Yeah, yeah, it would be more analysis or... Yes, yes. She, we should... Geology? <laughs> she, she, was, she came along in the first, uh, the first adventure, and geology was incredibly useful. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, so give, give it a shot. And uh, sorry, this is a, a difficult task, so no, uh, no zero... Ta- Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right. What is, what is the ship rolling? Uh, the mean? ship is uh, communications and engineering. I need some ones. Yeah. Give us a one, Mugato. <laughs> no. <laughs> 17. Okay, so the... Um... <laughs> so uh, this signal is overwhelming the communication systems, and uh, Lieutenant Lilith is uh, unable to... Uh, to make any sense of it, uh, it's uh, actually uh, at this point overwhelms the communication systems, and they are now disabled. So uh, Lilith immediately reports, "Captain, uh, the communications are down." And as soon as she reports this, that the system has been overwhelmed, the ship is struck by a wave of uh, uh, by some sort of subspace wave that interferes with every system on the ship. So the light panels are flickering. Systems briefly go offline and come back on. And um, when the uh, uh, systems have, have seemed to recover, uh, along with the communication systems, you also see that, uh, that oh, I have, to, I have to spend for this. So I'm going to spend two threat that the... Um, all right, he's already <laughs> losing. <laughs> the, fa- yeah. the phaser, the phaser uh, systems are down, so your weapon systems are down, as well as um, if, you, if you check on your person, uh, anyone with a, uh, a, a personal phaser, those have also been disabled by whatever this what? subspace wave is. So all phasers... Red alert! Are, Spark, all, shields up! <laughs> all, <laughs> all phasers on the ship have uh, uh, been disabled, as well as communication. So now, uh, 
Are sensors operating? It's time yeah. to start scanning things. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Sensors are <laughs> sensors are still operational. Sensors, engines, you know, everything else uh, is is operational. It just seems that uh, the phasers and communication were impacted by whatever the subspace wave was. And I'm so sorry, like we don't have internal communications then. Like we can't call hail uh, engineering. Oh no! In, uh, internal internal would work. It was just the uh, okay. uh, yeah the uh, the ship's communication system that when you were trying to receive that signal, it completely overwhelmed it because it was yeah un unsuccessful kind of trying to manage the manage the damage and and keep the system from being uh, uh, overwhelmed. Gotcha. I'm, I'm sorry. Did you say we were uh, in a system or in warp when this happened? Or? Oh yeah, you were just uh, surveying a system. Yeah, you you were approaching a, a system for a survey, and this just this came out of uh, out of nowhere. Lilith suddenly reported yeah. receiving a signal, and then it uh, overwhelmed the ship. And uh, Shield. yeah, shields up, Stark. What was that thing? Templeton, get up here and fix comms. Something, something, something. Start yelling at everybody. <laughs> so I'm gonna start. Yeah, he's doing some mild evasive maneuvers until the captain yells at me. We should be um, scanning for uh, whatever caused that. Okay. Yeah, so you can uh, do a, a sensor sweep uh, of the ship and uh, the surrounding environment with reason and science. And this is difficulty zero because it's just a uh, straightforward uh, sensor sweep, and you can... This is difficulty zero. Okay, yes, that's cool. Yes. The previous thing wasn't. <laughs> it was very difficult. So now some momentum may be generated, and uh, you can use the ship sensors and science as well. Um, so I'm rolling for reason and science? Yes, yes. And using my astrophysics focus? Oh, sure. Yeah, because that was a, uh, a phenomena. You're getting the ship, Matt? Sure. All right. Oh, that's good. Yay. So, yeah, three Ooh. three momentum. So go ahead and add those. So um, what your scanning uh, tells you is that the, uh, the hull of your ship has some residual tetrion particles that indicate that uh, the ship must have passed through what, what that wave was, was a massive wave of tetrion or a burst of some sort that uh, hit the ship. And uh, trying to uh, kind of pinpoint the source of this, it appears that uh, the, um, the source of the, uh, the signal or this wave was the Abasa system approximately 12 light years away. Uh, it's uh, the, that that direct path leads uh, leads to that system from where the uh, the tetrion particles originated. You can spend momentum to obtain a little bit more information if you'd like. Tell me more, Stark, about yes, this. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> do that thing. All right. All right. So give me a momentum, and uh, so Wait, from three to two. Yes, and so um, with uh, with more. Uh, thorough scanning and uh, kind of calculating the uh, the path of this wave, uh, you see that the decay of the tetron particles uh, indicate that in the Abasa system, it most likely originated from Abasa seven, and uh, and the particles, the the nature of the particles, uh, it's they seem to be natural, but the way that they were generated uh, seems a little bit strange. The uh, kind of configuration or the uh, the generation of the particles is a little odd, but they do appear to have uh, to not be some some artificial some some weapon or something, but actually have uh, uh, had an, a natural origin. What is the name of the system again? Abasa, A B A S A S S A, A B A S S A. Abasa Seven is the uh, most likely the uh, the source of this. Uh, should we lay in a course? How are the other systems? Can, are shields up? Do they come up when I? Yes. Yep. Everything else responded. Yeah. Me. Yep. Just your phasers. Uh, phasers are still down, and uh, and your personal personal phasers as well seem to still. What about ship weapons? Um, the phaser banks are unoperational. Uh, photon torpedoes seem to be. You seem to still have, or you have, you have even crazier torpedoes, don't you? Um, yeah. But the uh, other weapon systems, just phasers, were affected. Your um, hmm. quantum torpedoes are are doing their quantum best. They're still there. 
uh, and, and operational. Um, but uh, yeah, nothing else is. Uh, nothing else seems to be affected. But s- systems did go down uh, momentarily. It was it was a pretty extreme wave that hit the ship, and uh, Lieutenant Lilit. Um, is doing a little bit more investigation and uh, she comes to the conclusion that uh, there was in fact a, uh, the communication message that she received was in fact embedded in this uh, Tetrion wave that hit the ship. So the, the, the communication and the wave were, were one in the same. Boy, they really wanted to so get through. Can we tell what the signal said? Or is it like, it's encoded? Or, yeah. So just past us and we can, we didn't get a recall. Course. Yeah, so you you can. Uh, she has she has a, a packet of the I- information that was received from the wave, but right now it's uh, pretty indiscernible. So if you want to perform a kind of a linear challenge, so like a, a linear tasks, a few tasks in a row, you can prepare uh, repair repair the degraded message so it can be deciphered and then decipher the message itself. So yes. Well, how about if we get Lilith and Templeton to work on that together? Oh, okay. All right. And uh, good idea. And start yeah, we don't have a Vulcan ETA science and, officer. Yeah. <laughs> What's the ETA on getting our phasers back up? This is making me and communications. Do oh yeah. Any, I'm asking Mark because uh, I yeah, know let's who I would like ask, reboot but. the system or reverse the polarity or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Decouple the. Um, Heisenberg operators. Yes. Yeah, yes. All right. You take them on li- offline and reroute them through the paradox cylinders and uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> secondary EPS conduits. Always the secondary EPS conduit. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so um, just a, a kind of cursory examination of the both the communications and phasers shows they are just disabled. There hasn't been any damage, but it's going to take some work to bring them back online. So, yeah, you can decide kind of in what order you want to approach things. And uh, if you do, uh, yeah, if you, if, uh, yeah, and then yeah, at the, after that point, after you decipher the message or get some idea of what the message is saying, you can decide to, how to proceed. So what would you like to do first? Uh, real we quick, definitely round table need here. weapons. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there uh, ideas on how we can modulate the shields to protect us from future were they tachyons or tetrions Tetri- we tetrions yeah tetrion. tetrion is there a way to modulate the shields or adjust them in some way to better protect us from tetrion emissions in case this happens again guys anyone here just spitballing <laughs> look at you engineers that'd be templeton right <laughs> right yeah. right tetrion particles exist in subspace environments but te- tetrion particles are they the same way Tetrion radiation is a bombardment of those particles. Okay, so they're connected. So we need like a... So like if we get the warp like field up, will that protect us? Like do we have to idle the warp engines at all times? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's try. Yeah, yeah I, I would like to take a beat. Uh, my suggestion is the cat that we take a beat here to see if we can... Yeah, maybe modulate the i just i like use the word modulate like our warp field to better protect us from future tetrion emissions in case mm-hmm. this is a reoccurring effect like maybe we should take you know five minutes and see if we can figure that out before we get closer to the source of these emissions because next time it may not just be our phasers and communications that are offline it may be us mm. maybe the maybe the three of us can work on that while templeton and lelet work on the the communication okay yes let well, let's form a, a micro field crew to go to engineering and figure that out. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Also, you said that it, the origin was how far away? 12 light years? Yeah, 12 light years away. So what is that in warp travel terms? Oh, yeah. How long? Um, that, that, would, that shouldn't take long, depending on the, your, your warp speed that, that you should be able to arrive. In. 8.9. There we go. There we go. 8.9. 8.9 days. <laughs> So you have you have eight point nine days <laughs> to uh, you know traveling at high warp was like it put the didn't it put the universe in danger of being ripped apart or something like that and that's why ships have to like try to maintain like a, a lower uh-huh. warp speed except in emergency use. I thought it was isn't nine like the cutoff or something nine point nine 
9.9. Okay, uh, well, so I, I, 8.9. I'm bad. <laughs> you know, and warp 10 is like a probability drive. Turn into yeah, you, you just can all place it simultaneously yeah, and reverse evolve into a lizard, or you just go to warp 13, <laughs> like in the last episode of Next Generation. One of those two you get to pick. Right. Yeah. So, so at a at a reasonable uh, rate of speed, let's say it'll take you a week. So you guys have a, a week to uh, uh, figure out uh, to to work on the message, and then also uh, work on the sh- the shields themselves. So are we okay with me plotting a course and going to warp while we do all this? Yeah, I think so. Well, I would like to I would like to figure out if we can protect ourselves from further tachyon bombardment before we get closer to the source. So I would like to maybe sit idle here, have them try to fix bring the phasers and or have them determine what's going on with the, the message and us try to get the protective shields up and get everything back online before we head out. I don't want to show up with our pants down <laughs> when we get there. All right. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that Mendez is flying us out of the, the breadth of that bombardment until mm-hmm. we're ready to go to warp, like oh, he takes us okay. somewhere out of its current, how we understand its current like uh, area of effect. Sure. <laughs> yeah. No. That that makes sense. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you can plot a course that uh, avoids that avoids that path, and uh, you'll you'll have some warning if you get communication systems back up. Uh, you know, Lieutenant Lillet detected uh, the signal uh, long before the wave hit the ship. So you know, but you know, she had some pre, uh, advanced warning. So you'll know beforehand. All right. So what should we? Uh, which task should do you want to approach first? We do the shields first. Yes. Okay. Shields sound good. All right. So you're going to. We're talking about like tachyon protective shielding, right? Because our regular shields are working. Yes. So it's yes. trying to get ourselves protected. Yeah. Yeah. I right. think that's the first thing. Okay. So yeah, let's say this isn't going to be uh, this isn't going to be in, insanely uh, difficult for you. Have a lot of uh, information. Uh, the ship sensors uh, didn't go down, so you have a lot of information about the uh, from the scanning the particles on the ship and what the wave was composed of. So let's just do a um, let's just do a, a difficulty two, and let's see what uh, probably uh, insight or reason, and then engineering. So whoever wants to take that, and then you can use the ship as well, or or you know one of the uh, one of your crewmates can also roll the same for assistance. If you want to use the ship, or you want to use a crewmate, whichever. What do you guys got? That puts me at twelve. Puts me at ten. What, what are we looking at? So insight or reason and uh, engineering. Um, 12. Perfect. I will lead. I will command. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and so, you can, you can um, use computers and engineering you, and assistance if you want. <laughs> you probably, I'm guessing you might have some focuses that apply here, Terry. I doubt I do. Oh, yeah. Um, I have an astrophysics focus. Yeah. That would, um, that and a uh, ship or tactical systems focus. Oh yeah, that yeah. Either that of those. seems right. Yep. Yeah. Either of those. <laughs> and has your awareness and survival. You know those. But no geology. No geology, huh? <laughs> no stand, geology for me. I'll just stand behind Lieutenant Stark and go. No, uh, press that button. Press press that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, okay. Yeah, and then uh, computers and engineering will give you a twelve. The ship. Yeah, you can roll. So you said well. reason and. Yeah, so either uh, reason or insight and engineering. Whichever you prefer. Uh, reason works better for me. Okay. And with focus and rolling. Oh. You there you go. I should be in Vegas. Yeah. Good rolling. Are you rolling the ship, Will, or am I? You, you can be the ship. You're a ship man. As the commsman, I feel like you have you know the most direct contact with the ship. So. <laughs> it was computers and science, or the computers and engineering. Yeah, in engineering. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
No. No, the ship is useless. <laughs> it's not helping. A right. lemon, you know, the ship. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, you were successful, and now the shields are uh, attenuated to the uh, Titreon, Titreon wave uh, that w- you were hit by. So it won't cause, uh, it won't cause any more system uh, interference or, or disabling uh, if you encounter that, uh, that same energy again. So you're good to go. Excellent. Was it by somehow rerouting the warp field through our shield emitters so that... Uh they did things yep stuff. exactly yeah yep. yeah <laughs> there's a i want to point out that there is like a history of um other starship crews getting radiation poisoning and yeah. uh, oh. other things like that from <laughs> from tetrion <laughs> attacks and tetrion weapons um should have been in my environmental and, suit <laughs> like even the even the caretaker used a tetrion beam to like get information about ships before using their her, their their catapult to oh. like steal ships, so so you're saying it should be we, standard that our shields protect us from Ted. I think our doctor should be checking into that. Ah, okay, yeah. to make sure oh, that yeah. we are not suffering from any kind of weird yes. thing that's going to turn us into lizards oh. or couches. Maybe, maybe, maybe he needs oh. a cool of iodine or something like that to calculate <laughs> us all with really. Space. The far flung future, and we're still using iodine. <laughs> yep. Well, yep. I, I said the Tetrion poisoning. Yeah. All right. Well, the Vulcan Vulcan triplets are on the on the case. So, uh, right. Seki, Reki, and Becky are uh, yeah. They'll, they'll uh, do some uh, some analysis of the crew, some scanning, and uh, make sure that yeah, no one is suffering from the effects of the Tetrion wave. Do the phasers reboot, or do we need to do something for that? You're going to have to bring those back online, too. Yeah, and as well as the individual. No. As, yeah, as well as individuals, phasers. Do those use USB chargers, or, or the <laughs> chargers? Yeah, it's, it's USB-C. Yeah, it's actually D. That's the, the latest is D, I think. <laughs> I'm starting to well, think we're like future, an old... So it's got to be like L. Galaxy <laughs> USB L. <laughs> yes, right, right. And you have to Thunder port. What the hell? <laughs> um, I think that's you again, Lieutenant Stark. That's definitely more your thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm more of just a, a nod and observe. Type <laughs> of a well, I'm uh, sorry, I missed something. What is my thing? <laughs> work on getting the phasers back online. Uh, oh, the ship phasers. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and, and yeah, we need our weapons before. Uh, whatever created that Tetrion wave like right. catches up with us or before we catch up with them. So, yeah, I'm I'm looking at the weapons and trying to figure out how to reboot that system. Okay. Or funnel power from the non-essential systems into the phaser array. Whatever. Okay. So yeah, so to bring back up a uh, a disabled system, uh, so that would be, yeah, so yeah, it's the same um, same sort of task. Yeah, we won't make an extended task. We'll just make it a, a straightforward, um, a straightforward task. So yeah, it'll be this. It'll be similar. It'll be similar to what you rolled before. So um, yeah, insight and reason or. Uh, I guess in this case, uh, we'll do science. Is that, yeah, if that's better or worse? Um, yeah, well, okay. reason, my reason score is 10. Okay. Um, and then engineering is 2, or science is 2. Okay. But, oh, actually, if it's phasers, though, if it's, if it's phasers, why don't you do security? Yeah, do reason and security for the phasers. That'll be well, that works in my favor because yeah. I have a five, and, um, then, and I have shipboard tactical systems. Yep, that that's good. Yeah, take that as I, a focus. I think I can help with that because I have a pretty good reason plus security myself. And can okay. I use team dynamics because we're working as a oh, team? Oh, you are uh, sure. Are. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, yeah, go cool. for it. Yeah, so yeah, you can assist that. That's better than the ship. So, go for it. Oh. Oh, oh, Crap. oh, oh that's does. why you don't let the <laughs> officer. Abandoned ship, phases on overload. Yeah. Oh, no. All right. Break the saucer and, and uh, 
So yeah. the uh, <laughs> okay. So I think I'm actually going to take that. I'll take that to play with later. So I'll just take those the two threats from that complication. So you are successful, and you could bank. I'll, I'll give you a momentum. So it was only a two difficulty uh, bank of momentum, but uh, yeah, you do have a complication which may uh, which may come up uh, may come up later. But uh, yeah, so uh, phasers are back online. Uh, the system, you, you don't really uh, quite know why they both they and your uh, personal phasers were were disabled by this wave. Um, so the part of the complication, it still doesn't make much sense what happened, and uh, well, that could could show well, itself uh, later. While they're arguing over the phaser system, mm -hmm. I'm like browsing on my panel, and I just sort of notice and point out to them, Hey, it says here the U.S. Mogatu has redundant systems, and uh, we're supposed to nominate a system. Oh, so when that goes offline, we can bring its backup online. Oh, maybe we we should change that to make that uh, phasers. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, Miss Andrews. It's always been the phasers. <laughs> yes, no, that sounds like a great idea. <laughs> Ah, oh, you may choose to activate your backup. Oh, wow. That's we also have modular laboratories, so should we have, like, tachyon uh, emission laboratory set up in the... <laughs> yes, you could, you could start investigating. Start an adventure. The crew may decide how the modular laboratories are configured. This configuration counts as an advantage, which applies to work performed within. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. We were doing scans, so at the very least, we could be, like, radiation type, you know, like, research facilities right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if we want to not completely just be like obvious it's tachyon stuff but we were doing scans and checking out unexplored areas so yeah that's right yeah we got to use these uh the talent who, and set them, who set up those labs for radiation <laughs> ron templeton <laughs> yay ron because Ron Templeton's focus is radiation. <laughs> yep. He's like, I'm going to find something cool out here, guys. Hmm. <laughs> He's all about the radiation. All right. Okay. So, um, yeah, so phasers are back online. And the only thing that you still have, well, and uh, communications, I guess, um, if you want to roll, let's see how Lilith would be doing yeah she'll oh yeah well her and templeton were like trying to oh that's right well, they're the already... message they're oh that's right they were doing the message that's right okay so why don't we have them roll then for the message so uh the first step is to repair that the degraded degraded signal so you can decipher it so control and engineering who's who's doing templeton that sounds like a Templeton thing. <laughs> oh, and engineering is a 13 for Ron. Oh, okay. And let's see. And it's, it's like all, it's a 10 it, for her. So it's all Ron. Does astrophysics or radiation apply? I mean, it has to be radiation. Oh, radi oh yeah, right? radiation definitely applies, yeah. Does his modular labs, the Templeton labs, <laughs> do anything? <laughs> I don't think, well, I guess they can help the ship. Yeah, they can give the ship, uh, yeah, if he's if you set them up for radiation, then you get an advantage, right? Yeah. So yeah. So it'll, it'll make it one easier. So yeah. Um, if you're going to use the ship and those modular labs, then you can roll communications and engineering, and the difficulty will be lowered to one instead of two. Um, oh. But the the base time for this is about two hours. Um, so yeah, you ha you have plenty. You have plenty of time. Hey hey. All I'm right. The ship roll roll two. Two. Yeah, and have the ship roll. Yeah yeah. So that's uh, what they're doing. Uh, Sensors? No, wait. Computers and... Um, communications and engineering. Yeah. yeah. Communication. Uh, yeah, Not at all what I said. Okay. Uh, <laughs> there we go. One dice, but it has a focus. Yes. Radiation. Hey. Oh, all right. There you go. Yeah, so they I get... didn't make it worse. So you guys get three momentum from that. Woo! Nice. Nice modular labs. Yeah. 
All we'll right. just assume those are always radiation unless we think otherwise. If we get <laughs> that makes sense. All right, and uh, so you've you've cleared up the the degradation of the signal. It, it took about two hours, uh, and now the message is uh, capable of being deciphered. So to decipher wait, that, wait, this is where we, the three of us that were in engineering, dramatically come back out oh. of the turbo lift <laughs> yes. onto the bridge, and and the commander tells Templeton, "What do you got?" <laughs> 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 what do you got, Templeton? Tell me you got something good. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, oh, who's, Lilith. oh, Lilith. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Templeton. Uh, I guess Lilith says, uh, "Yeah, we've we've managed to repair the uh, the degraded signal. Uh, we're in the process of deciphering the uh, uh, deciphering the the message itself. So, uh, give give us a moment here. This uh, this could still take a while. Yeah, let's let's take it to the when you get it. Uh, let's meet up in our little room with a table that isn't on this bridge but i'm assuming it's the place on the right yeah where we all know. sit around at the table and <laughs> the ready room the, yeah. the ready room yes yes so yeah we'll, we'll, we'll convene with you in the uh the ready room once uh once we have some idea of what we're what we received all right so let's see insight and science for the for deciphering let's see how lilith is doing Oh yeah, she might be good to roll for this to decipher the message. So, insight and science, assisted by the uh, the communication, uh, the ship's communications and science. I don't think that any of her. She doesn't have good. We've been over this before. She doesn't really have like <laughs> right. communication officer focuses. She has like yeah. combat focuses, which cool. is amusing. That's because I think we went with that once. Once she gave her like the mean right hook, I went with all aggressive stuff for it. Um, okay, so she'll go inside science. Uh, I mean, she has a fifteen. Yeah. She'll be okay. Yep. And then the I mean, what she, she debating with us that she can do it? She gets a. Yeah. Yeah. We have lots of momentum. You might as well spin some. Oh yeah. Oh, I I rolled. I'm sorry, but I got two successes. Hey, all right. So yeah. So you, you have, want to do the computer, Matt? Yeah, oh. the difficulty was two. So roll for the. So you've got it, but roll for some momentum. Oh, I guess you you can't uh, get that either. Like, which ones are the ship? Communications, the ship? communications, and science. Maybe we can immediately cash in the momentum for even more. Oh yeah, there you go. Like, Good find enough. a text file buried in it that we can <laughs> read. <One. laughs> All right. Okay. So um, yeah, it's, it's another it's another few hours of uh, deciphering this message. Um, it isn't. I shouldn't be waiting in the waiting room the whole time, but I am. <laughs> yes, he's... Uh, it's just going to be another minute. <laughs> And uh, so the uh, communications officer finds out that uh, the message appears to be uh, a simple distress signal of some kind. The language is completely unknown, but um, from uh, from all the clues uh, of uh, what she's looking at, it seems to be a distress signal. And the uh, the message itself was, in fact, embedded in the Tetrion wave. So the the message that they decoded and the Tetrion wave were one and the same. So it was actually, you know, modulations in, in this radiation that she was uh, interpreting. All right. Oh, all and right, then. Well, I feel like we wasted too much time. These people are in trouble. Why aren't we <laughs> heading there right now? <laughs> All Warp right. seven. Yeah, so that's what that's what oh, they, seven. Only seven. That's what they. I mean, uh, they're usually going up like five or six normally. So I mean, we've we punched it up a little bit. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So if you want to proceed, yeah. So that was uh, that was the result, and then she'll get to. Um, uh, we, we can just do this. Uh, uh, off camera, she'll get to repairing the uh, communication systems and bringing them back online completely, uh, while uh, while we travel to the uh, Abasa system. So yeah, so uh, Captain Paiji, uh, yeah, so, so uh, you know, so set a course for uh, Abasa Seven, and uh, let's see what uh, let's see what this distress call was all about. All right, I'm hovering my finger over the go button. What what is <laughs> Captain Paige's version of engage. <laughs> what is it? I don't know what to um, uh, commence. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. And uh, so, yeah, it takes uh, it takes a while. So on your arrival, so the communication systems are completely back online. And I guess um, we can also kind of off screen your uh, personal phasers. You took them uh Took them to security and uh, uh, had them 
repaired as well. So the, the uh, phaser, the personal phasers are back online, and it was basically every every phaser on the ship was uh, disabled by this wave. But, but um, over the course of the travel, um, you brought it back online, and you uh, arrive at the Abasa system, which has a, a G-type star. And it is located within uh, Federation space. The system itself has 11 planets, uh, but only uh, Abasa 7 lies in the habita uh, habitable zone. So uh, we can switch to that itself. So can you guys see that? Purple planet. Yay. Abasa 7 has three moons, and from space it has a, uh, a violet hue. So it appears to almost be glittering like a gemstone. Uh from your analysis, it's class M, though there's very little vegetation, nothing really more than lichens on the surface of the planet. Uh, not ideal for, for colonization at all. Um, and it looks like, uh, from, from just preliminary scanning, 95% of the planet is covered in ocean that is the color of amethyst. Uh, a lot of the surface areas are, appear to be all crystalline. And the seas do contain some life forms, but mostly lower life forms, you know, single cell and uh, uh, very, uh, a few types of algae and mollusks, but nothing classified as dangerous or sentient. Well, let's beam right down. <laughs> All right. No. Uh, Did you get any results about the uh, radiation? Oh, about, um, oh, let's see. Uh, so. Yeah, the source. So you're seeing. Um, oh yeah, you guys are maxed out on momentum, so we won't bother uh, rolling. So yeah, the oceans have a, a incredibly high mineral content. Um, so there's a high concentration con concentration of deuterium. So an, a hydrogen isotope, which uh, you know is used for fuel uh, fuel in matter and antimatter reactions, and uh, the oceans themselves are incredibly deep, uh, up to thirty thousand meters, almost twice as deep as anything on Earth. Um, let's see. And your initial scans, you, you notice a, um, there appears to be some sort of refinery located on one of the small crystalline islands, uh, in the Southern hemisphere of the planet, but your scanners seem to, there seems to be some sort of interference and, uh, you're not able to actually scan the facility itself. You can just, uh, you know, of its location, but your in internal scanning you, is being blocked somehow. It seems there's some sort of interference. So you're not sure if there's some property of the crystal of the crystalline, uh, kind of land masses themselves or what exactly is causing this. Lilith, mm. can you do standard hail and see if anyone replies? Does she boop de boop de boops? Can we get communication? Oh sure. So she's hailing yeah. Facility? Yeah, so she's hailing the uh hailing the facility itself and um as she's doing that, uh let me see. Uh bu bu bum. Uh, uh take a shuttle. So right as she's doing that, let's do this. Um, f from behind, uh, immediately you notice that uh, from behind one of the moons, uh, two uh, two smaller uh, two small ships uh, uh, emerge from behind one of the moons and begin firing on your uh, oh. begin firing on your ship. So shields up, red alert. <clears throat> Yeah, so you, yeah, you oh, red alert. open comms with those ships. <laughs> All right, We're USS Federation <laughs> Starship Megatu. <laughs> so you, you're you receive a, a very brisk, uh, a, a very uh, a blunt reply that says, uh, uh, this is not uh, this is not property of the uh, Federation. We demand that your, uh, your your ship leave immediately, and then they cut off. Uh, Cut off communications. Stark, can you target their weapon systems? We need to get them back on the comms and figure out what's going on here. Um, Shoot those yeah. little phaser arrays of theirs. <laughs> Is that our only option here? Well, it's, it's run, fight, or ignore them. I don't think we can ignore them. <laughs> but I think, you know, we can... Maybe cow them by if you just tag tag their two weapon systems. They'd be like, "Now will you guys talk? What's going on here? We had a you know we're just replying to stress calls." So mm -hmm. yeah, and 
So these are just like little little ships. Yeah, they're they're very they're very small uh, small fighter ships that uh, and they appear the uh, the make is uh, kind of strange. They seem like a stock ship that's been modified um, to just you know run security or something uh, in this in this area. But uh, they're not long range at all, so they're they're obviously. Um, so, from nearby. Are, is it possible to target just their weapon systems? And oh, sure. Yeah, if uh, you want, if you want to just lock lock on them, so they have a little bit of a. How deterrence. small are we talking? Like guys in cockpits, or like yes, are they... yeah, they're, they're um. Oh, I yeah. didn't realize they were that that small. Okay, maybe just tractor them. Oh, oh, <laughs> there you go. Hey, hey, hey. All right, <laughs> all right. So tractor beam. Yeah, let, let me see. Uh, let me. Uh, the class of the ship. Let me refresh my uh, uh, memory here. So, um, yeah, interceptors. I want a security team in shuttle base seven. We'll say there's <laughs> seven shuttle bays. I don't know how many there are. <laughs> we have a our tractor beam of strength five. Is that good? Oh yeah, yeah. That's that should be plenty. These are yeah. These are just little interceptors. So let me. Uh, get At least the- shuttle base four is the empty one right now, sir. <laughs> or it is there. thank you all right yeah strength four yeah you'll you'll be able to move yeah these guys are only i think size two so you'll be able to move both of them with your tractor beam pretty easily without <laughs> well, yeah. or, or is together, much closer to the radiation up. labs too so we can study their ships and see if they've received any radiation damage it's all perfect it works oh, out. so perfect. we need a roll to do that yes um so you can roll control and security assisted by the ship's structure and security uh, for a, uh, a successful tractor beam uh, lock. Yeah, so you'll, if you're successful, you'll immobilize the vessel, the target vessels, and they cannot move or break free. And uh, um, that, yeah, and, the, and then uh, they can't, uh, yeah, th- they'll be uh, held because your, sh- your tractor beam is so powerful compared to their size. So control- And I can use my... Sh- Board tactical systems. To oh, sure. That, yes, or? yes, and uh, and definitely, yeah. Use some of that momentum. Oh, <laughs> or or not. God dang you guys! <laughs> well, uh, are you going to roll for the ship, McAndrews? Sure, sure. Can can the ship use momentum? <laughs> I guess yeah, yeah. Well, we can we we can yeah make that uh, kind of proactive. Yeah, so roll two dice and spend a momentum so that the ship can roll two dice. Quick, did everybody you, help. Did you say it was weapons and security? What did you uh, say? Uh, sorry, uh, structure and security. Structure and security. Yeah. You know, I just want to point out that we are we, we might, next time we're in dock, uh, we might want to work on the security stat. It's pretty low. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh, that's Stark's department. I, I don't know what to say. I have a five in security, and, uh, and I have focuses. I know, you're better than the ship, is what I'm oh, saying. Oh, nice. <clears throat> All right, you got it. So yeah, you lock onto these uh, interceptors and uh, and start hauling them in. And so probably have just beamed yes. them in. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. You can just beam the pilots aboard. Yeah, let's. <laughs> well, well <laughs> leave their ships out there floating around. No, no, we'll we'll we'll, we'll greet them and we'll we'll confine. Them. I think it's more impressive to bring their ships in. I understand what you're saying, though. Now let's uh. Stark, uh, I don't know why, but I always like McAndrews to come with us. Let's meet them down in Channel Bay 4. And I want to check out their ship. Okay. Yeah. All right. On our way, then. While they're tractoring in, mm-hmm. can we? are we able to do anything? Like, could Lieutenant Stark do anything to uh, power down their engines or anything? Oh, um... Or you know, turn off their weapons, basically. Oh, right, right. Yeah, it's... Uh, well, they're, well, they're held... Yeah, I guess... Um, the, uh, on torpedo will take care of that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. They. Um, oh yeah, it doesn't say. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about. Uh, yeah, you you can uh, uh, if you'd like uh, try to disable them. I'm trying to see. There's not really a uh, uh, send but, our own Patreon packet at their ship. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. They they um, but but they appear to be. You see, they 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 power down weapons and everything. Once once they were caught in the uh, tractor beam, they uh, uh, basically put everything offline. Yeah, they they just rolled over, rolled over on you. And um, uh, as as they're coming in, and before you leave the bridge, um, 
you do you are hailed from the uh, uh, planet surface. Uh, you're not not exactly sure because of the interference, but it seems that you're, you're receiving a signal from the refinery that you saw on the planet's surface. So yeah, because we just kidnapped their security force. <laughs> right, exactly. And so this, <clears throat> let's see, this is who you see, and these are definitely not screenshots from uh, Star Trek television shows, but. Uh, this is what appears. Oh. On, this is what appears on the screen. So, oh no! <laughs> I mean, isn't that the, the first lady of Ferengi? It is, yeah. but but uh, yes, but it's a it's a very well dressed. Uh, Should it, I arm the torpedoes? <laughs> <laughs> it's a completely clothed uh, a Ferengi uh, female, and she, really? she yes yes she's she's completely clothed, and she's hailing the uh, uh, ship, and immediately uh, uh, I'm sorry, a Federation a Federation vessel. Um, I uh, apologize for. A any misunderstanding um, I, I it's it's very difficult to get good help in this part of the galaxy i need to uh, uh reprimand those uh those uh, fighter pilots immediately uh, uh welcome welcome to uh our installation my name is lishka uh, i am the uh administrator here at this uh mining facility and uh i welcome you i welcome you to uh uh uh, to to visit or uh, uh, whatever you're doing, if you're if you're surveying, well, this is a, a very very fascinating planet. I'd be more than happy to show you my uh, uh, facility here, which is all all of course above board and uh, <laughs> compliant with the Federation <laughs> Federation regulations. And uh, yes, uh, uh, I apologize if if you would be so kind. Uh, you, feel free to examine uh, examine the ships that you have uh, brought on board. But uh, I can assure you, they they mean you no harm, and they're they're merely a security force. Uh, and you uh, are, more, are more than welcome to shuttle or uh, transport uh, down to uh, to our facility, uh, and uh, we we can discuss uh, what in fact you you're you're doing here. Yes, we will we will be at to your facility shortly. Thank you. <laughs> it's right. a long this, this time? Is federation space right like the frangie don't have... it is yes yes okay, yeah. yes right. yes yes yeah there's no yeah she's this is very far from uh Ferengi and yes yes she is it's very we'll odd be coming in hot with the <laughs> with the with the, Throw the book at we, him. yeah but first we're gonna question these fighter pilots and then we'll move on from there okay all right. So, um, so yeah. So uh, the, the uh, you end communications, and yeah, you can head down to the uh, the uh, bay, the cargo bay, to meet with the pilots. And there, so there's a uh, a Uridian and a human are the uh, the two pilots uh, that you see. I don't have. Uh, they have just kind of standard security uniforms. Uh, here, I can. I can give you something like this. So they appear to look something a little bit like this. Um, just a kind of a standard uh, default. And you see some uh, some logo representing the uh, uh, the company running their refinery. Oh, uh, does it have a name or is this? Uh, it's, it's, it's just a, this a, there's a little graphic, but there's no, yeah, there's, there's no name, nothing you would recognize. Uh, and if... Uh, um, oh yeah, so so there would be let's let's just call it uh, uh, <laughs> fast <laughs> fast fuel is the uh, the company that uh, uh, company that the, the kind of clumsily uh, uh, designed company logo and uh, doing a quick uh, check of that uh, with the, uh, the ship's computers. There's no registration for the company of this name uh, with the Federation. So they're operating in, in Federation space, but uh, yeah, there's no registration of this of this uh, facility and its operation. Oh yeah, they're up to no good. <laughs> when I yeah, I should have asked this earlier, but as we come down, as I see these two guys, mm -hmm. what's my first, uh, you know, psychic reading of them? Oh sure, yeah, they're, they're but, uh, um, they seem to be uh, scared. They uh, uh, were just following. Seems like they were following orders and uh, uh, didn't want to engage with such a uh, <laughs> such a large vessel. Didn't think their their intimidation was going to work, but uh, uh, it seems like they they're just following orders. They don't seem to have any uh, uh, devious plan to you know get aboard the ship or anything. They're just security guards that uh, got caught up. I'm going to go check around the ship the ships while they're questioning them. And are they like warp capable? 
No, no, they're um, they're just interceptors, obviously used for just security within the within the system. And they did fire on us, right? Yeah, they did. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so the ships the ships themselves, um, the interceptors, are yeah just small fighter craft. Uh, they're they have phaser cannons that they're uh, uh, may, uh, that they're uh, equipped with, and uh, the make of the ship is it seems like a stock uh, a stock uh, fighter that was just modified, uh, you know, just for the duties uh, in this system. Nothing particularly special uh, uh, or noticeable about them. They don't appear to be stolen. They appear to be purchased. Uh, you know, they're they're something you could easily buy. Well, boys, you open fire on second flagship of the Federation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in Federation space, under potentially foreign command, uh, I say you start talking now about what you know and hope that by turning on your uh, employer that you don't end up in a stockade somewhere for <laughs> the next 40 years. <laughs> and these guys are human? Or uh, one Uridian, Urid- uh, a Uridian and a human, yes. Which ones are Uridians? Oh, I'm like really you. ugly. <laughs> yeah, here, I can, I can show you. This is a, uh, this is, here's an example of a Uridian. Uh, but this will, this guy may show up later, but yeah, he like, he look, one of them looks like this and okay. one of them is human. All they right. They kind of look like Ferengi prototypes. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, and you know Euridians are kind of um, free agents. You know, they kind of work for hire. Uh, so th- it's not un- unusual. If this is a, uh, a Ferengi, uh, you know, operation, uh, it wouldn't be unusual for them to hire uh, Euridians to help them. Uh, yeah, so known as trailer- traders and smugglers, information merchants, and uh, just basically work for pay. And uh, yeah, that, that's that's why they they just they both say yeah, we're just just doing our job. Those those are the orders we were given, and yeah, we didn't uh, we didn't think we would have any sort of uh, effect. It's just they 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 told us to keep uh, keep ships away from the system or keep ships away from the facility. How long have you two boys been working for fast fuel in this area? Uh, well, we've been here almost since the beginning. Uh, uh, yeah, we got we got brought on and uh, have. Uh, had our ships uh uh pretty much the the whole time uh yeah this is uh, of course just the uh just a simple uh what's the <laughs> i keep totally dropped that just, yeah did, uh, the simple de- yeah deter- deuterium uh deuterium uh facility and uh yeah we, we're just uh just hired to do security you said since the beginning uh is that like you may not, they may not have this information mm-hmm. in the module, but is that like a year, 20 years, uh, but, 10 minutes? Uh, we, we've been doing, we've been here about, uh, I'd say about five years. Okay. So they've been operating this illegally for five years. Yeah. In my well, mind. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right, 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 yeah. So uh, yeah, that would be, uh, I think, uh, yeah, next month will be my, uh, fifth anniversary. Oh, <laughs> yeah, are they, are they get, do they give you a cake? Or? <laughs> I I doubt it. Uh, Liska's a, a little lean with uh, compensation, but I'm sure uh, I'm sure we'll be fed. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, I see you guys have two options here. We're about ready to go to uh, the outpost right now and talk with Liska. Uh, you can return with us and deal with her, or you can stay here on our ship and. Deal with the Federation when we get you back. Uh, Which way would you like to go? <laughs> well, if it's if it's no trouble, uh, we, we'd like to uh, return back to the facility. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think I'd rather deal with Lishka than the, the Federation at, at this point, if that's okay with you. I have I one, mo- one more important question. Uh, uh, yes? What fraction of light speed can your impulse engines get? <laughs> Uh, uh, very, very small, very small fractions indeed. Uh, we we've had a little bit of trouble with these uh, ships. They're not uh, they're not the most reliable, but I think she got them for uh, a deal. She got a good deal on them, so uh, this is what we got. Mm. Well, there's a good chance those ships are going to be confiscated, um, and she may be blaming you. I just want to let you know that's going to happen. Do you still want to return back to her? Uh, yeah, I, I, I guess uh, I, she's already do- she's already docking me uh, for the last uh, engine burnout we had. So uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll head back with you. 
You okay. Trying adop- you trying to adopt these pirates? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I just, you know, I don't really want to have to fly back to Sector 1 with people on the brig no. to hand them in. So I'd rather turn back. But at the same time, I don't want him to hand him over and have her just shoot them because they cost too much. I don't know exactly how, <laughs> how they'll handle the situation. But, uh, all right. Well, then, uh, Stark, can you, uh, Give them a scan, pat them down, make sure they don't have any weapons on them, and we'll... Okay, yeah, I'll check them for weapons. Yeah, right, and they're both, yeah, I think they're going to both be equipped with uh, uh, security. Yeah, they both have disruptor pistols on them. Mm. Uh, but uh, yeah, other than are that... those uh, legal in the Federation? <laughs> those probably aren't even legal here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, yeah, yeah, if, the, uh, uh, if you're going to take those, then that's just going to be more... Uh, more I'm going to get docked on my pay from Lishka, but uh, if that's uh, the Federation protocol, I I guess uh, that's what you're going to do. It is for now, yeah. Can we, uh, hey, look, can, and Templeton, can you guys download the whatever database they have on these little oh, okay. fighters mm-hmm. of, the, <laughs> of the circles they've been flying around this planet? Um, and why don't you two gentlemen accompany us to transporter room three <laughs> yes three <laughs> three excellent all right and um uh the uh yeah so so they accompany you and yeah you were giving the coordinates uh for both uh shuttle bay and uh transporter from lishka and she uh uh yeah oh, she, so she welcome uh, do we want to take the shuttle uh mick andrews that always is your jam <laughs> <laughs> well, we do seem to have trouble with the transporters periodically. The transporters are pretty reliable these days. <laughs> are we dealing with like deuterium deposits in the ocean? Will that affect things? Deuterium There's... is for powering warp drives. Right, right. I'm just saying, you know, everything disrupts everything. <laughs> are we, sure. are we cool <laughs> Right. Even Tetrion beams and particles. <laughs> Did we ever get a, a a report on our the radiation? Oh, yeah the uh, the radiation. Um, so you you didn't uh, um, from the scanning that you did. It seems like the source of the uh, radiation that there's a, a quite a bit of the Tetrion uh, Tetrion particles uh, throughout uh, the uh, uh, a good portion of the uh, the ocean itself so you're you're detecting tetrion uh particles actually in in the water itself but not uh uh not a, a strong reading that would lead you to a, a source kind of the same amount the same amount that was on the ship on your ship well kip and can i call you kip uh <laughs> who was it that sent this the distress signal I ask the, oh, the security guy, a distress signal. Guy. Uh, yeah. What wasn't us? We're all fine here. How are you? <laughs> Was there? A... <laughs> <laughs> you, you didn't get the Tetrion. The Tetrion wave didn't uh, affect your ships. No, no, I no, nothing, nothing to report. Yeah, did, is with my telepathy, telepathic abilities, are they? BSing me, or yeah, do they just yeah, be like, no, you, 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 no, you, you can you can tell that yeah, that there was some sort of uh, event, uh, and they they've been asked to you know to, uh, completely ignore it. It's it's supposed to be uh, not spoken about. They've been began with strict yeah strict orders to kind of suppress this. Uh, gentlemen, you may not know this about me, but I'm a Betazoid, and we have certain gifts I'm sure you've heard of. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you didn't beat around the bush with us and keep things from us, uh, especially me, because I really don't want to have to throw you in the brig. <laughs> I'd rather return you back to your employer. <laughs> so so you're, you're, you, you want me to lose my job, then, is uh, what you're asking. <laughs> well, nothing. Look, we're all Starfleet. You know we're all very educated and smart here. Maybe we figured it out on our own. But if you could uh, tell me a little bit, I you know, so I could compare notes, then uh, <laughs> I can confirm what we were thinking. 
Uh, well, uh, yeah, there's been some, uh, uh, more recently, there's been some unusual activity. Uh, the oceans themselves have, uh, have gotten, uh, rough and, uh, there have been uh, these periodical, uh, I don't know, uh, energy releases that we've been, uh, dealing with. So, uh, yeah, sometimes the facilities get taken offline and, uh, sometimes we've had, uh, trouble with our ships, but, yeah, that we haven't. Uh, the scientists that uh, at the facility haven't quite uh, determined uh, what we're dealing with, but uh, it's been interfering with the refining processes. But we've been given strict orders to not talk about it. So I would uh, I prefer if you uh, didn't let uh, Lishka know that uh, we we led on to uh, knowing about any of this unusual activity. Oh, I mean. We already knew all this. This is why we're here. The a wave of tachyon, tetrion energy flung across the galaxy and slammed into our ship. So we know that what's going on. So don't don't you worry. <laughs> this won't come back to you. All right. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm barely getting by as it is. Let's, uh, we'll go. We'll, we'll we'll go to transporter room four. It's fine. We'll, we'll teleport much to McAndrews. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I could fly one of their fighters down and meet you. <laughs> we, we may have you do that later. <laughs> All right. So who's going to accompany the uh, the pilots back? Well, I want to talk to the lady. We always need security. Mm-hmm. For some reason, we always take a helmsman with us. <laughs> so we'll take... <laughs> So you'll take Mendez? <laughs> yeah, we'll take Mendez. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, right. He's in a special training program for, like, yeah. uh, a, uh, what do you call it, foreign relations. Yeah. Right. He wants, right. He wants to join the diplomatic corps. <laughs> nice. No, and um, so we're assuming this is, like, a... And, and Templeton, just because I think that if we want to know what's actually going on in the facility... May want someone who's slightly more educated in engineering to understand what's actually happening down there. Oh, okay. I think just the four of us. All right. <laughs> that sounds good. Okay, so yeah, you uh, uh, you're transported down to the coordinates that were given, and um, yeah, you arrive uh, at the facility. So um, uh, immediately you can. Uh, see that the uh, the refinery itself was built on one of these crystalline islands um, kind of just in the middle of a uh, of a vast uh, sea so uh, you uh, arrive uh, what looks like a uh, it's it's an uh, an open air uh, platform that overlooks the ocean and the refinery itself so if you gaze uh, over the edge of the platform, you'll see that there's uh, small, several crystalline formations uh, rising out of the ocean. So this this island that the facility is built on is just a, a larger version of one of those. But the uh, ocean itself has uh, several uh, crystalline formations, and you're greeted on the platform as you transport down by another Uridian. And uh, so yeah, it'll be this this same guy, uh, another Uridian, and he d- introduces himself. I am. Uh, Mishran Vol, so welcome to uh, the fast fuel refining facility. Uh, please, I would like to uh, uh, invite you to join Lishka. Uh, she is uh, uh, preparing uh, some uh, some refreshments for you, and uh, I, w- I will uh, escort you to uh, to where she is. Uh, so she t- he takes you uh, from the platform down uh, some narrow steps towards the refinery itself. Uh, the refinery is. Uh, pretty massive. Uh, it it uh, occupies most of this uh, most of this island, and as he leads you down these stairs, uh, you make your way uh, through what looks like some uh, housing that they've uh, put together for the uh, the workers at the facility. It it just looks like, looks like uh, converted storage containers, and there's uh, kind of various tents and temporary structures all around this. Uh, uh, in this area, kind of this this uh, this flat area of the uh, the island leading to the refinery, and uh, as you 
leave kind of this residential area, you see uh, that there's actually a small open air market adjacent to these uh, residences. You see all sorts of uh, establishments of vice. There's small taverns and gambling, uh, uh, gambling uh, uh, businesses, and uh, all seem to be, you know, trying to get the uh, the pay from the refinery workers. In uh, they all in- fast fuel. Yes. Uh- Right. Yeah. Everything. Everything is. <laughs> right. Yes. The fast fuel lucky seven, and uh, yeah, the fast fuel. Uh, yeah. So everything is. Uh, it looks like uh, established by the uh, uh, the refiner itself, the company itself, and uh, you know, and some of them uh, j- just uh, glancing at them look, you know, just barely this side of legal. There seems to be maybe there's a, a brothel or two, and uh, yeah, maybe some illegal substances uh can be uh purchased so it, it's uh it's very um it's very obvious that there's uh, several violations of federation law occurring here in this marketplace well, the whole facility is a <laughs> violation of federation law so <laughs> yes <I don't. laughs> you know commander if you want me to do any reconnaissance in town i i could do that for you <laughs> i'd like i would like you to get a lay of feeling of the people here and see what's going on uh, if get an idea of how long they've been here how, how much they're offloading from this planet and what's going on with those tetrion waves that are apparently emanating from this planet <laughs> all right yeah so is uh is one of you gonna gonna break off oh, and then... as soon as he says that it's like there's a cartoon puff of smoke and i'm gone <laughs> okay <laughs> all right yeah so uh <laughs> nice so uh uh mishran uh, mishran vol doesn't doesn't notice and uh continues he, he's kind of giving this like stock speech about uh you know the, the, this facility uh so you're getting a little bit of information we've been here uh j- just uh uh over uh, about uh, six years now we've been uh We've been running, and uh, the uh, refinery itself uh, employs about 1,500 workers. Uh, we provide residences, and of course, there's recreation and entertainment. And uh, uh, yes, uh, and uh, as you may have noticed, there are uh, dozens of different uh, species from all over the uh, Alpha Quadrant are in our employ. So we're we're benefiting, uh, yeah, many families and many many people in this system. And the- yeah, those people over there in that dirty tent are <laughs> really benefiting from uh, your your assistance. And uh, and the one thing that you notice, um, as you see that that it's it's true that there are many different. Uh, uh, species here of uh, of different humanoids. Uh, you don't notice any Ferengi. So uh, Mishra, uh, I'm sorry, Lishka was the only uh, Ferengi that you've uh, seen involved here so far. All right, and we need to get to talk to her pretty soon so that we can. I have a feeling that she has some insight into that uh, distress signal. Hmm. Oh, I would hope so. Right, and uh, yeah, as you're approaching, uh, as you're getting closer to the uh, to her facilities and the refinery operation itself, you can make some uh, you can do some scanning if you'd like with uh, using your just visually or using your tricorder if you want to get a, a little bit more idea of what you're what you're seeing. That sounds like you, Stark. I will start scanning if I haven't already been doing <laughs> yeah, right, it. Yeah, yeah right, yeah. right. <laughs> In the midst like, of... <laughs> I can, I already have. <laughs> All right. So, uh, reason and engineering uh, with a uh, difficulty two to get some more idea what you're looking at. And don't forget we have lots of momentum. Oh, yeah, yeah, spread that momentum. Okay, and um, let's see, hazard awareness. Um. Yeah, sure. Yeah, or? sure. Sure. Yeah, you can do hazard awareness because you you're not quite sure you you were experiencing a hazard. I, I use a momentum. I get an extra die. Is that what, yes? How right. that works? Yeah. Roll. Yeah. So roll three. So down to four, and then I get to roll three dice. Oh no! All right. Well, you got two successes. Yep. Yep. So you got you got two successes, and um, so yeah, from uh, from both visual and tricorder. Uh, scanning, you can see that uh, the equipment that you're seeing at this uh, refinery is appropriate to a, a mid-size uh, deuterium refinery, uh, but it seems that there's some extra machinery 
uh, that uh, wouldn't would be part of some other sort of refining process. And um, you also notice that uh, the uh, refining process itself uh, seems to have some interference. Uh, so you're not able to scan much beyond uh, the um, the refinery facility itself. Your any long range tricorder scans uh, may be interfered with by uh, by this refining process. And um, yeah, so you'll have to get uh, actually inside the facility itself to do any uh, any more detailed uh, get any more detailed information. Uh, there seems to be some sort of interference with range. Um, let's see. And okay, yeah. So we can we can save that for later. But there was a complication. So let's see here. Uh, I have a stroke. <laughs> yes, yes. The uh, tricorder has burst into flames. Um, the uh, uh, so yeah. So let, let's just say. Um, uh, oh yes, and the the pilots are with you, right? So you ha you still have the you yeah. brought, they brought the pilots with you. Okay, so um, uh, your your group as you're as you're continuing on the way, your group is met uh, by uh, security forces that are in the sa the similar uh, fast fuel kind of security, and they uh, uh, speak something uh, quietly to uh, to Mishran, and uh, then they uh, abruptly take away the uh, the two pilots uh, that were with you. And uh, I and, and Mr. I, was, I, I apologize for that. Yeah, we, we need to uh, debrief our pilots and uh, perhaps uh, punish them for their uh, over enthusiastic uh, protection of our facility. I, uh, again, we apologize for for any problem that may have caused. So yeah, the the pilots are are gone, unable to provide you with any more. <laughs> Anymore. My pilots. <laughs> Your pilots, you can no longer scan them, uh, and. Uh, Yes. Okay. So yeah, you'll be you're led inside. So yeah, the um, so now you're inside the facility. You see, it's a massive complex of machinery and offices. Um, there looks like there um, that the the operation has attracted a lot of uh, technicians and scientists, and then there are of course many laborers uh, working in the refinery. So as far as as far as you can see, and it looks uh, it looks very busy and successful. Um, they seem to be, uh, uh, yeah, very uh, uh, producing a lot and doing well. Um, On a scale from one to ten thousand, <laughs> yes. how many uh, Federation OSHA uh, violations have I seen in uh, the five minutes we've been here? Yeah, it's 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 in the the <laughs> it's in the uh, the low thousands. Yeah, you you don't you, <laughs> you can see that uh, there's a lot of. Uh, a lot of inappropriate uh, use. Uh, some some of the um, uh, se uh, safety equipment or some of the uh, the ways that uh, some of the laborers are are completing their tasks are are very unsafe and probably causing them uh, uh, some significant health risks or damage to their uh, uh, yeah damage to their to their lifespan. So yeah, it's not uh, uh, it, there. There are definitely some problems here that you may need to address. But uh, good to know. Good to know. yes, but uh, Maul leads you to the um, uh, leads you to the living quarters uh, for uh, for Lishka, and you notice immediately as you as you pass through the door a marked difference in the uh, in her living quarters. Uh, as opposed to the uh, the workers' quarters and the market, um, and uh, also uh, once you were past the other thing that you noticed is once you were past the market area, there was an electrified security uh, fence that you did have to to pass through. So there is uh, a security around the refinery itself that separates the uh, the worker camps from uh, from the work area itself. Uh, so uh, yeah, and once you. Uh, once you pass inside, you notice that uh, uh, the her li living quarters, Lishka's living quarters and offices, are quite luxurious. Uh, it looks like the uh, some money has been spent to appoint the uh, appoint her offices and areas. Um, let's so see. an appropriation of profits. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. It, it, it seems like the uh, uh, she's benefiting uh, from much more uh, the, from this much more than her workers. 
she breaking rule of acquisition 1732. <laughs> Do not misappropriate uh-huh. profits. <laughs> yeah, very well could be. All right. So yeah, you're led led through kind of a, a maze of hallways, and uh, eventually you arrive at a, a lavish dining room. So Lishka greets you. Uh, hello. Uh, please uh, be seated. I've uh, I've prepared a uh, uh, some refreshments for you. Uh, I, I, w- I hope we can spend some time together and discuss your uh, your purpose here, and uh, uh, perhaps uh, talk a little bit about uh, uh, about my facility. Uh, so yeah, That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> and you notice from as as you did from the communications, she's a, a completely clothed uh, Ferengi woman, actually dressed very uh, stylishly. And um, there are many amazing uh, exotic kind of specialty foods from throughout the quadrant laid around, uh, laid out on this table. So uh, she tr- she's tried to uh, uh, find something appropriate to everyone. Uh, and uh, so she asks you to be seated and Vol joins you at the table. So he sits at the far end of the table uh, from Lishka. And uh, doesn't doesn't uh, say anything as she continues to uh, to do most of the talking. Uh, Are you sitting stark, or is it just <laughs> me sitting at the table? So is everyone um, sat down? I don't sit. I stand. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think Templeton would sit though. Probably he's probably just he looks hung- he, he looks hungry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, so so before uh, before th- it goes any f- things go any further, I will uh, r- readily admit that uh, uh, of course this uh, refinery isn't officially registered with the Federation. So uh, yes, I mean we are operating within Federation space, but technically the Abasa system hasn't been officially claimed by the the Federation. So. It's a little bit of a gray area. I, I know that uh, that may make you uncomfortable. And of course, I am more than willing, if that's your purpose here, I'm uh, more than willing to uh, register and to do whatever whatever is needed to bring this facility up to uh, up to snuff with the, uh, the Federation. Hmm. Well, I can't say it's good to hear that you're willing to repent or the mistakes that you've made um, in the past. However, you, there is a. From my understanding, you've been here for what six years? Ah, uh, yes, yes. We're uh, we've been uh, in a very very short time. We've been able to uh, bring our production up to a, a very impressive uh, level and uh, supplying fuel, as you know. So uh, yes, uh, it's, it's a it's a a, a fairly uh, rapid success, and uh, I'm I'm very. Uh, proud to be the uh, uh, the head of it. Are you uh, the CEO of Fast Fuel? <laughs> so, I am the owner, founder. Uh, this is m- my baby, you would say. So you would say that the Gold Press Latinum stops with you, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, yes, exactly. And if uh, if there's anything I can do apart from this uh, this uh, this uh, lovely meal that I've laid out before you, anything else that I could uh, do for you uh, to to make the uh, the process of legitimizing this operation and uh, smoothing things over with the Federation, I uh, I'd be more than happy to uh, uh, yeah provide any sort of compensation. Should we ask her about the the Tetrion wave that hit our ship? I was getting to that Stark, but now that you brought it up, <laughs> sure, why not? So, well, what brought us to your uh, corner here of the galaxy uh, was uh, a Tetrion wave that was still, to my knowledge, heading out uh, deeper into space, causing all sorts of havoc. Uh, damage is done to our ship and others. Uh, immeasurable costs and possible fees for <laughs> for the repairs. Um, wait, I would like to know why you would assault a Federation starship <laughs> with such a means. <laughs> 
Patreon way. Well, I, I can guarantee you that uh, my facility is not uh, attacking uh, ships with any sort of waves. Uh, we've had some unusual weather recently, but uh, nothing, uh, nothing as far as waves we're sending out into space. Uh, any radiation or anything we're generating uh, is uh, is contained within the facility. Well, no, no refinery accidents. Ah, uh, no, not well, nothing. Actually, now that you mention it, there may be something you can help me with. Uh, so we can help you. Okay. Yes, uh, <laughs> uh, we know working together. You know, cooperation. I mean, well, I'm cooperating. I'm, I, I've, you know, look this this beautiful meal and my willingness to uh, comply with all Federation regulations. But yes, speaking of accidents. Uh, Five of our uh, workers actually have recently disappeared. Uh, so during this unusual weather that we have been uh, uh, dealing with, we had sent a uh, a crew in a submersible into the ocean itself to find uh, to find perhaps richer uh, richer sources of uh, of the. Uh, for our refining uh, processes, and they have, uh, in fact, disappeared. So I don't know if this is related. Uh, if this is related to this phenomena you're talking about, and and of course, um, so uh, uh, the commander is here, right? So uh, Ute, I'm here. Yeah, Ute yes. is here, and so you um, you can tell from her explanation when you mentioned the Tetrian waves that she uh, she she knows uh, that that is happening and doesn't uh, doesn't know any anything else about it like the source of it or anything. It's just been something they've been they've been dealing with, but uh, uh, she's unsure. Uh, uh, does doesn't have any doesn't seem to know anything about it, but does uh, is aware of this. It's not just the storms, but yes. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. It was a half a dozen, actually. Half a dozen of our uh, workers went missing. Uh, so they were. We've we've searched uh, uh, e everywhere that uh, uh, we can, as far as our our sensors will go into the ocean, and uh, we uh, uh, were unable to uh, unable to find them. If perhaps uh, you would be so kind, I know you have a much much better technology than we uh, would have here. If you would help us locate these. Uh, uh, these workers this we may uh they may they may know something about uh uh what's happening and of course it's it's very bad for uh uh for the company morale to uh just have uh employees suddenly uh, suddenly go missing from uh perhaps some some sort of accident well i agree as much as having employees fall into a deuterium uh <laughs> refiner because it doesn't have proper uh shielding put around it as i noticed your refiners outside don't help. um <laughs> yes oh yes oh we, we, we were getting we were getting to that that was uh i think next week we're uh we're, we're installing those uh that shielding so what Just were the you. what were the five people doing in the ship at the bottom of the ocean. Uh, so we were we were looking for uh, looking for higher concentrations of deuterium. Uh, perhaps uh, the the depth of these oceans is 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 uh, qu it's they're quite vast, and uh, we were we were looking perhaps if, and finding out if we need to go deeper. Pretty much what we've been gathering uh, previously was a surface level, and this was a uh, a bit of a. Uh, uh, an exploration to uh, to see if we could go uh, go further, and uh, they encountered something down there, and uh, we've lost all c all contact with them. There's no sign of them in any of our any of our sensors. Nothing can uh, nothing's been able to locate them. You said they ran into something down there. Did they communicate before uh, going dark? Uh, the, yes, we had a uh, the last communication was was talking about a significant. Uh, uh, crystal crystalline formations and were they were getting very high uh, very high levels of the deuterium uh and then uh communication was suddenly lost but uh it seems like they had been successful up until the the loss of uh loss of communication and how long ago was this again uh this was actually just a few days ago During this uh, well, it, this weather uh, we've been uh, receiving, what what's the time in relation to when we 
got hit by that wave. Oh, um, uh, so it would have been uh, this. This would have happened. They were lost after because yeah, if you, if you took about uh, a week to get here, yeah, they they were uh, more recently they were lost. So it it didn't coincide with the wave itself. Do you? Uh, my hmm. I'm trying to think of what how to murder this person. Um, <laughs> Well, I can tell you that Starfleet is large and always has need for fuel, so I can see the potential uh, use for uh, the fuel site here. However, as a connoisseur of Starfleet law, (laughs) (laughs) um, I do believe that there's a whole series of fines and penalties for operating six years Mm -hmm. well within Starfleet uh, borders, I guess would be the right term. (laughs) And, um, And it may be something that would require you to go back and speak to the council. Does Starfleet have a council or does it have a they have a president. Well, they have president of Earth. Federation. Anyways, Federation, yeah. Mm. Uh, to go back and uh, speak personally and plead your case. So I can tell you that, as I understand it, rules as written, uh, we would probably have to shut you down. <laughs> oh, let's not, uh, let's not jump to any... Uh conclusions here i'm sure we can uh, uh come to some sort of understanding uh let let me explain myself uh, perhaps you are surprised that uh, a person of my uh race and uh, origin would be uh here operating a facility especially a woman uh i i'm i need to explain that this this is my my project and also my escape uh from ferengian so i uh uh this, uh, the the what I'm doing here is to enable me to uh, to to generate enough revenue to allow some of my f- sisters of uh, Ferengian to uh, be freed from the uh, control of uh, of our culture and uh, the males that dominate all of the the commercial. Uh, commercial and financial uh, worlds we're we're not allowed to uh to work with the uh work within the system we're we're kept i'm sure you're surprised that i'm clothed so i i you know that we are kept in our houses and not able to work not able to participate in any of the uh the business that uh uh ferengis are are known for uh so i i fled I fled myself, and uh, this facility is my my will be my means to help other uh, others of my uh, similar thinking to escape this oppression of our home world. So I, I would uh, I would beg you that uh, to please uh, show some some mercy when you're uh, assessing fines and things. I of course I'm more than willing to. Uh, to pay for and and bring this facility up to whatever code or regulation uh, the federation requires, but I'm doing this for a uh, a good reason. It's not it's not only personal enrichment that I seek. So I'm just going to cheat and be a telepath here again. Do yes. I generally believe what she's telling me? Oh uh, yes, yeah, no, it's it's totally yeah. yeah this is totally yeah. Uh, uh, honest. Yeah, her, this is her honest, honest view and her opinion. And so she believes. Yeah, she's liberating. Uh, she will, will be liberating women that uh, uh, want to leave uh, Ferengian. Well, your goal seems noble. However. The way you've gone about it has it looks like it puts many in danger, has broken many laws, and has at least gotten six people lost in the bottom of a infathomably deep <laughs> void of an ocean. Yes, uh, uh, yes. So, I still think that when we're all said and done, we'll probably want you to come back and talk at Starfleet, but I'm sure they can work something out with you. However, 
do, are you aware that these emissions that have been that have, these weather patterns, whatever you want to say, have intelligence behind them and are being used as a sort of communication? Ah, no. Uh, my scientists have not uh, informed me of anything like that. Uh, if you have some uh, some data that you could perhaps share with us, uh, that is quite surprising. And you detect that that's a genuine. She has genuine surprise. No one could ever lie. <laughs> um, of course, let me, with your permission, uh, allow me to get a security team down here and we'll trade off the data and uh, see if we can try to figure out a way to locate your missing person. Ah, uh, very good. I, I would uh, appreciate your assistance. And of course, I will. Uh, I'm more than happy to. To comply, it's very important if uh, that would restore, I think, a lot of the confidence of the, the workers if we were able to to rescue this team that we lost. Excellent. All right. Uh, let's get to you that data. Excellent. And, of course, uh, you're more than welcome to stay here. We have uh, a collection of suites uh, for visitors, uh, all very well appointed, of course, and uh, there will be... Uh, meals served so uh if you uh if you would prefer, prefer to stay at the facility we uh, have accommodations but I, I understand uh whatever whatever federation rule allows uh i think i may like to stay here thank you uh stark do you think you can head up a team to try to locate those missing crewmen of theirs? Yeah, I'll do that. Um, uh, I'm not sure which is uh, more effective, like scanning from here with our own like tricorders, or should we scan using the ship's scanners to see if we can locate like their submarine or whatever mm -hmm. at the bottom of the ocean? Yeah, it's some probes, probably. Yeah, yeah. So probably the ship. Yeah, probably using the ship. But you can communicate with the ship. Your your communicators are working. Uh, yeah, you don't notice any interference uh, from where you're at. So you can communicate with the ship. So, so. we can ask our ship to scan. Mm -hmm. Sure. Or life forms under the water, or yeah, yeah. So or, um, or, yeah, if you make or the, uh, or should we take a shuttle down? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh so, yeah, Mick Andrews isn't here. We should totally deal with Mendez. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> so <Wow>. yeah. <laughs> so you can uh, yeah you can scan. Uh, so the uh, the ship is capable of scanning the entire planet. Uh, the captain the captain informs you it'll probably be about twenty four hours to get a full uh, a full uh, careful reading if you're actually looking for life forms. Uh, but you can also um, use shuttlecraft uh, and and actually if you want to uh, propose this to uh, uh, to Lishka, she will. Um, uh, she says that they do have submersibles uh, that you that you would be al uh, allowed to use as well. Um, so your shuttlecraft, using the uh, ship shuttlecraft, you'll cut down the uh, the time uh, your time in half. So for each shuttle you use, uh, this day will you know can be reduced to uh, up to like six hours. Yeah, so I would prefer to, to use hours. our own shuttles instead okay. of their. Uh, yeah. Okay. submersibles all right i don't want to get crushed at the bottom <laughs> of the all right all right yeah, and i'll think I'll, I'll let you completely handle that and i just want to stay here and get a feel of the people like okay. i just want to you know beta betazoid everybody <laughs> betazoid powers activate all right yeah <laughs> all right uh yeah so yeah let's move on to do that so yeah we're kind of in the next so yeah, you, you finish up the meal and we enter the next. Uh, Is Mick scene. Andrews already three sheets of the wind? And oh yeah, yeah, has it... the gutter somewhere. <laughs> That's right. So yeah, so Mick Andrews stayed behind you, so you kind of wandered the, uh, wandered the markets. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. So uh, uh, what? Where did you? What interested you? Did you go into some gambling or drinking facilities? What? Uh... Yeah, I mean, well. First, I'm looking around to see if there's anyone actually selling vehicles. Oh, okay. And, and if there isn't, which I doubt there would be, but mm -hmm. if there isn't, then I'm going to like the most raucous gambling den I can find. Oh, okay. 
All right. So yeah, you find uh, you find yes a, a busy uh, a gambling tent, and they're playing just a simple a simple dice game. So you're, you're betting on even and odd in a uh, uh, in a in a metal cup, uh, and uh, but it seems to be a very popular game in these parts. And uh, some people are looking. Some of the uh, the players are looking quite desperate. Uh, it, it seems like they uh, uh, they're trying to work off a, a sort of debt and and hoping that uh, their luck holds. Uh, long enough for them to uh to make some decent money this night i'm gonna try to uh latch on to the most desperate looking of them <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> and you know just sort of sidle up to them and when it's their turn cheer them on and when they lose you know <laughs> pat them on the back and say oh man that was so close i have no concept of money but i feel so bad for you <laughs> Uh, I've lost. I've lost almost all my script uh, for the the week. I, I've got. I've got to make this up. I have. So the trip here, just the trip here was so incredibly expensive, and Fast Fuel has been kind enough to, to pay for it. But uh, I've been working off this debt, and I, I seem to just be digging a, a deeper and deeper hole. Uh, I was hoping tonight my luck would uh, turn around, but it, it doesn't appear to to have been. Just oh. keep betting that paycheck. You'll get there, buddy. <laughs> keep doing it. That's terrible. And here you are in Federation space being subjected to this kind of thing. That's terrible. <laughs> Federation? I... I, I, I... Oh, oh yeah! Oh yes, uh, and he no- notices your your uniform. Uh, uh yeah, a Federation. Yes, uh, wonderful. I- I'm so glad to uh, uh, to be here under the protection of the Federation. Pull out my hand, Chamberlain <laughs> McAndrews. Nice to meet you. Hi, uh, nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Grawl. Grawl is he human or was? He? Uh, yeah, yeah. This, yeah, he's he's a, a kind of a, a dirty, dirty looking human, but yeah, he's uh, he hasn't he hasn't you, bathed in a while. Where do you hail from, Grawl? Uh, actually, I'm from a uh, a, a small uh, a small settlement that uh, uh, had a uh, had a little bit of an outbreak, so uh, we had to flee before we were all infected. And uh, uh, fast fuel seemed to be the uh, the best way out. <laughs> so uh, an outbreak. <laughs> uh oh. Does he have any like noticeable lesions or anything? Uh, no, no. Yeah, he he looks pretty clean. No, he's. I, I, I've I've been here. I've been here for more than a year now. Yeah, nothing. Uh, no, no symptoms. No symptoms. But uh, yes, I. Uh, <laughs> mm. Well, uh, as I'm sure you've heard, that whenever the Federation shows up, we're here to help. <laughs> so why don't we go for a walk and you tell me what I can do to help you? <laughs> okay. Um, and he he tries to yeah pick up the few remaining uh, uh, script that he has uh, laying on the uh, these these little tokens that are laying on the uh, the table. Uh, all right then, and uh, yeah, so Grola accompanies you out of the tent. So what do you do here, girl? Uh, we're just all working in the refinery. I am, uh, I'm mostly in transport. Uh, after we uh, uh, get the deuterium uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, concentrated, I, uh, I, move, I move canisters mostly. Hmm. On a vehicle? Uh, no, it's with a hand cart. Hmm. <laughs> You really deserve a vehicle. <laughs> I would love a vehicle. So, what, 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 what kind of, what are they refining here? I uh, just deuterium and some other stuff that we're, we're. I'm not. I don't do that stuff. So, uh, I think that you get paid better if you do the other stuff. But uh, yeah, it's. Uh, hmm. We're on the deuterium duty. How come you don't get to do the other stuff? Uh, they they choose they. They just kind of choose some some of the workers, and uh, you you kind of get promoted. I uh, I guess I haven't been here long enough. Hmm. Hmm. Well, like I said, we're here to help. What? Maybe I can give you some like techno wizardry, or you know, some some babble you can cite to your supervisor to get you promoted to that other stuff. What is the other stuff, by the way? <laughs> uh I think uh, I heard somebody called it latinum. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Interesting. Don't know a lot about that. Glad the baby uh, Ferengi, uh, 102nd uh, rule of acquisition nature decays, but latinum lasts forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, 
How long have you been here? I, it's been a year. Hmm. Well, um, what is there like a different factory for the Latinum that you would go work at? Or yeah, is it, it just... Uh, well, they're connected. Yeah, uh, there's there's some guarded doors that uh, yeah lead to the other the other place. I uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully uh, I'll get a, a promotion soon. I could I could use the money. Interesting. So um, when, I'm sorry. When we got here, were we able to scan the surface or no? Uh, yeah, you, you had. Uh, it was limited range. There seemed to be something interfering. Uh, interfering with it but yeah you you were you uh could scan the surface and you you detected um you definitely detected the uh the deuterium uh level in the waters uh very mineral rich waters and um yeah if you want to at this point too you can make another you can make another roll um yeah, but uh, yeah, you know, you did uh, everything that they uh, talked about as far as the uh, uh, substances, or the the minerals were true, and there's there's much more in the ocean, but the, the deuterium seems to be uh, what they're here for. Huh. Okay. Well, what's uh, uh this is me just asking. What's the Federation policy on refugees? <laughs> like. <laughs> Are are we allowed to? Uh, oh yeah, if you're gonna give people like refugee status, <laughs> or... oh, I'm sure that it would be uh, much appreciated. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. Yeah, if if you want to, I'm sure that uh, there's been. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think you would uh, if you, if any of the workers, as part of a, a directive, if you. Um, if if you, if anyone's in in danger or anything in this facility, you would be more than. Uh, yeah, within your uh, within your rights to uh, uh, to get them out of there to see, yeah save anybody uh, from the refinery that you think is is in danger or, or you know suffering entrapped or suffering. So, girl, um, we've observed numerous you know code violations while we've been here. Um, it's a not a, I don't know if you knew this, but it's not a registered plant. Not even supposed to be here. Um, how would you like us to get you off this rock? Wow, that'd be great. Here's some here's some growl art for you. <laughs> no, okay, cool. <laughs> that 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 would be great. I uh, uh, yeah, uh, I don't think uh, I'm I'm paying off this debt anytime soon. If uh, you could get me out of here and get me out of the uh, out of my uh, debt to uh, fast fuel, I, I I would be more than uh, happy to. To come with well, you. Well, you know, get you out of that debt in the sense that the Federation doesn't really recognize <laughs> this company nor, you know, a currency. So, uh, would you be willing to help us understand the layout of the facility, maybe, so we can better determine if it's all on the up and up? Oh, yeah, uh, of course. Yeah, I, I know this place uh, pretty well. I just don't know anything beyond the the doors, the other, the second facility. But yeah, I can take you anywhere, anywhere That's you want. That's great. <laughs> and there's two to beam up. <laughs> All right. All right. So you and Grohl return to the Mugato? Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> so he's he's overwhelmed. He could use a shower, but uh, other than that, <laughs> he's overwhelmed. So I'll uh, just go over to the transporter chief or whatever we got going here, and mm-hmm. like uh, this is girl, a former employee of Fast Fuel, <laughs> an unlicensed refinery. <laughs> he's gonna go ahead and. Uh, Lay out what he knows about the refinery and its operations, its layout, and uh, uh, and I lean in. It looks like it's a latinum operation disguised <laughs> as a deuterium <laughs> refinery. So if you could let the captain know. And I'm going to beam back to the commander, and then if you could forward us any layout information he gives you, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, we'll, we'll do. Uh, yeah, come with me, uh, uh, girl. We'll uh, get you situated. And then I'll have him 
be me. Okay. In a real awkward, like right in front of the commander. Kind of <laughs> All right. All right. Do you teleport like on top of the table I'm eating yeah. at? <laughs> <laughs> nice. There's Mick Andrews. All right. So, um, uh, yeah. So yeah, yeah. You've been welcomed. Uh, welcome to stay in the uh, the guest suites and uh, uh, yeah, in assisted in any. Uh, Help. Oh, that's right. You're also going to exchange information about the uh, the Tetrion uh, wave or any activity. Uh, yeah, see if, they, see if they have anything that they've picked up. I'm okay. assuming they've studied it somewhat if it's been messing with them, too. Right, right. Yeah, and the... Uh, um, uh, so, yeah, the, just the, the security team that, that shares data with the scientists, yeah, they, they are aware, aware of the um, uh, the Tetrion wave, uh, unlike... Uh, um, uh, Lishko wasn't eight, wasn't you know willing to to share that, but yeah, they they said they've been, they've been trying to uh, they haven't been able to locate uh, the source of it. It appears to be uh, from some coming from somewhere in the ocean, um, and it, they've had very uh, peculiar activity recently. Uh, just within the, the last few weeks, there's been very um, strange random storms, and uh, uh, a lot of uh, a strange activity in the ocean, and then periodically these uh, these waves are being uh, sent out. People keep trying to mine places that have sentient <laughs> things living in them, and they just <laughs> murder and everything. It's that easy. So, am I back? Oh yeah, yeah, you're back. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Commander, I have some uh, relays from the captain. Whenever you have a moment. Sure. I have a moment. I, mean, I could probably read your mind telepathically if you want to tell me, but I'll walk over <laughs> you. It's some you. theological study information. <laughs> That's a lie. Um, <laughs> can you read, th- like, ver- literally read thoughts or just emotion? So it says that, like, once I get to know people well, we can communicate telepathically. So I would think that I could probably pick up some, at this point, some. If you're like, they're mining lithium, not lithium. Uh, Latinum. Latinum. Mm. I I would think I'm getting close to that point, seeing how we keep going on missions with each other. But... <laughs> right, Riker and Troy uh, in the yeah. beginning of Star Trek used to. Yeah, talk I mean, we we haven't been. They had a little different. <laughs> <thing too. laughs> but also well, yeah, because Riker only was. Half, the, I mean, he's only half man, made his man, and... You're cute and all, but. You know. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm just saying, Just but she's also if, half Betazoid, so... If he starts calling you Imzadi or something like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that happens between sessions. Well, okay, let's let's do this. Okay, we'll, my, we'll, my we'll pull over to the side. We need a private discussion. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I also, think that's probably um, more it. I probably can, at this point, empath- empathetically detect your gist, but not like you can, can't tell me, like, 37. I don't... Probably can't do that. <laughs> I'm like, a number. You're thinking of a number. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, we can. Um, and Stark was a... supposed to be scanning the planet or. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I figured races, you were doing. So, yes. I, mean, I was just going back to, like, so she said she had rooms for us. I was actually going to just. I'm sure those aren't free. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're probably Frankie free. Frankie, don't give the... things away. <laughs> they're probably free for the. Uh, well, she's hoping it's going to be the uh, Federation officer that's going to legitimize the business. So. <laughs> right, right. Yes, yeah. So if you want to, if you're going to use uh, shuttles, um, so you can reduce. So the, the with uh, two su- two shuttles, it's reduced to six hours. I guess three would be uh, three hours, and that's kind of the minimum minimum time. And it's going to be a uh, a reason and science task uh, using the and also using the ship's uh, sensors and science difficulty three. To do a a planet wide scan. Hey Jeremy, real quick. So I'm oh. rolling for myself or for the ship. Oh yeah, um, yeah, it depends. What's up? Oh, I just you want to take a break. I, or, I just no, I oh. don't need a break. It's actually that I got to get up early in the morning, so I kind of want to have a hard out around eleven ish if we can. Oh sure. So you know. Okay. Okay, so that's like thirty minutes. Like. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That that'll be that'll work. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for the heads up. Yeah, I appreciate that. I'll. Uh, I'll get that timing. Yeah. So whoever, uh, so if you can use somebody on the ship, um, yeah, you can basically use, uh, uh, 
whoever to roll the reason and science, and then uh, sh and someone roll. Uh, Terry, you can roll for the sensors and science on the ship if you'd like. Am I on the ship? Oh, I can't remember where I'm at. Oh, you can be. I mean, we're site to site teleporting. I think I'm. I specifically just want to hang out on the planet because okay. I'm just trying to get a feel of how the people are being treated. Right. That's the whole thing I'm trying to do. It sounds like okay. me. Well, uh, I mean, I was I hanging out, but yeah, I, I never really established whether I was returning to the ship. Right. To do the scans or staying on the planet. Yeah, it's, it's probably, yeah, why don't you return to the ship? That's probably the, the best. Then you can right. you know, do other roles and, and everything. All right. And I didn't want to interrupt what everybody else is doing. I just wanted to remind oh, sure. everybody that I was doing that. Okay. I'm like, no problem, Stark. Hey, where'd Stark go? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I got confused. Uh, <laughs> they just get beaming in and out. Yeah. Characters appear, now disappear. Now you see them, now you don't. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So yeah, you can do that. Uh, so it'll just take maybe the the rest of the evening to um, uh, to run the shuttles and uh, do the scanning. So yeah. So, uh, reason, so reason and we do that now, or yeah. What, yeah. Do why don't we do later? that now? Yeah. Well. Well. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, Ute so, is retiring uh, to the. Uh, you said to his reason race. and uh, reason and science. With difficulty three, and you get the uh, ship sensors and science. And let's see. Uh, so let's go. We'll go back to the planet. I don't have any focuses here. Um. Okay, so okay. I'm rolling. Okay. All right. I'll get the. We got to. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> Well, you Both. got an eight. <laughs> <laughs> I need All different right. dice. Yes, yeah, these, oh. these dice aren't good. Oh, no. Oh, so you got two. Well, you got two. Yeah, you got the two you needed, but a... Uh, um, I think I'll take I'll take that as threat, that complication. Um, ah! Yeah, because there's also... Yeah, because you, 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 uh, you could succeed at... at uh, uh, succeed at... Uh, pr a cost uh, on this one as well, so I'll just I'll just convert that. So um, yeah, the uh, through the course of the night, uh, the uh, sensor suite from the ship, assisted by the uh, shuttles, has. Oh, I'm sorry. And any task too, you can also spend momentum points to. Um, so any more any more of these uh, extended tasks, you can spend momentum points to shorten the amount of time by half. Every every point halves the time. Um, but you are able to uh, eventually. So after about three hours, uh, you're able to detect uh, human life forms uh, deep below the ocean. Uh, so you you need one more uh, one more roll of the the same roll to uh, pinpoint the exact location. But uh, it doesn't appear that there is any sign of any of their gear, the submersible, any equipment, and they're about thirty thousand meters uh, below the. Uh, the surface uh, in a in a very deep trench, but you are you are getting uh, life signs. So they're in a bubble or something. Uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it's unclear. Um, it's uh, uh. yeah, you're getting you're getting life sign uh, life sign signatures, and you you've, you've uh, found the general area, and now you need to, one more uh, difficulty to task to pinpoint. And you yeah, use some of that momentum. Um, so the reason and science again, and then ships, ships, so sensors and science. If I do, or you could use a termination if you have a value. If I take oh, a nice. momentum down to two. Oh, okay. And I get three dice, right? Yep. Hey, hey. Two, five, oh, that's good. That looks pretty good. Yep. And you, so I still roll for the ship. Sure. I got it. Oh, got there it. we oh. go. Nice. Ooh, okay. Yay, yeah. You get yay. two, two momentum back then. You only need nice. needed the two successes. All right, but um, so now, yeah, you've been able to pinpoint. So you are getting life signs for six humanoids uh, detected uh, at this in incredible depth in a trench uh, at, at the bottom of the ocean. And of course, there's no signs of anything but these uh, uh, these the human uh, life signs or the the, the humanoid life signs. Uh, there is some electromagnetic uh, interference in the area that they were located. And um, you're detecting that from a cluster of large crystalline structures uh, below the uh, at the at the ocean's uh, floor at this location. The um, the life sign the life form signs are very weak, and they seem to be since you first detected that they seem to be fading. So uh, from the how, can we get a transporter lock on them? Oh, um, let's see. 
or is the interference stuff gonna yeah i think the interference uh in, the interference is gonna prevent you it looks like you're gonna have to take take a craft down because you're, you're getting enough elect- electromagnetic interference that you you won't be able to uh uh, to beam down you'll have to take a, a, a transport down and it looks like uh, from the the progression of this uh fading you'll have about four hours before you you've totally lost the uh the life sign from how it's it's decaying mm. in your uh significance okay. i'll yes. put together a um rescue crew okay you're gonna need becky to... becky take <laughs> the trip <laughs> All right. and, uh, Becky's our, our biologist. Becky's uh, our. This, uh, who's the shuttle guy that always wants to go? Is he available or is he somewhere else? McAndrews, you mean? Me? Is that. <laughs> oh, are you the shuttle guy? Okay, yeah. No, the shuttle guy. Yeah, you're you're going right. to miss out. <laughs> Yeah, so you could you could modify a uh, a shuttle to get uh, to get you to this depth. Um, you would have to, uh, uh, yeah, you'd have to, yeah. It, it wouldn't take it wouldn't take uh, uh, much time to do that. But you could modify a uh, a shuttle to get you there. Um, and actually, after the uh, after you've successfully located this, oh wait, let me see. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is what, I'll need some threat for this. So spend two threat. So uh, Stark, um, after making this, uh, uh, this de- determination, finding these life forms, you experience this strange kind of mild hallucination. So th- it's almost like there's something trying to to reach out to you. There's a, it's a strange kind of like you're, you're seeing kind of bright lights and these weird distorted visions. And then they just kind of go away. So kind of at the at the peak, um, uh, the peak intensity of the uh, the scanning, the second scan that you did, you start to get these uh, strange flashes of uh, of light and distorted uh, distorted vision. And uh, what this is going to mean uh, from this point forward, the complication range of any tasks that you attempt is going to be raised to four. Um, so you're going to have a very very high complication range because wow. you're, you're constantly going to be uh, uh, feeling this this really unfamiliar uh, sensation um, while you're uh, uh, while the, well whatever this is 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 trying to uh, uh, to reach you and okay. yes <laughs> it's good good fun and let's see so someone else needs to pilot the rescue shuttle <laughs> right right yeah so be careful yeah you, you feel so yeah you do feel a little unstable and that'll be mechanically reflected by uh, complication ranges is much higher for uh for your roles now okay well, you can have, me, you can have me beamed aboard mm-hmm. yes i will i'll inform the captain and the landing party and all that uh that we found uh six lives six faint and fading life signs 30,000 feet below and that we're putting together a rescue team for that. Okay. Well, then you're going to need Chamberlain. He's our best pilot. <laughs> Chamberlain. All right. That would be great if he could <laughs> pull himself away saucer. from his new friend. We take that saucer into the water. Let's do it. <laughs> Should I go to? I Should we separate the saucer? And- <laughs> maybe, maybe if you let me tell you what I know, you'll want to go. Uh, yeah. Oh yes, yes. Um. And yeah, yeah. Well, I assume it's been some time. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. So latinum is like an ore that they mine, right? It's a liquid ore. Yeah. No, yeah. it's refined into a liquid. Oh, it's the original into a version is solid, I believe, and then. Um, it has to be purified, and then that's when it turns into liquid. Mm. I thought it was like mercury all the time. Okay, cool. Yes, yes, it is an ore. <laughs> yes. Well, okay. uh, yeah, I will, I will. Iceless gold. <laughs> I'll let you know that we we've taken on board a refugee who's okay. inform, informed me that they actually have a secret latinum processing operation going here. That they have a special select group of workers who get paid more to work in that part of the building, which is connected to the regular work, but I guess guarded and walled off. That's what those other structures are. We that didn't match up with the. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
so there's definitely some extra hinky. I mean, it was already hinky, but now we know it's extra <laughs> hinky. And that it's not like a. I mean, it's just Latinum's only value is that it's valuable, right? <laughs> like it's not like it's not like spice, right? It doesn't have any other like thing that it does. It's just a rare commodity that, that yes. people like. It's like it's like an arc. I mean, you can use gold for other things, but it's like our idea of gold, right? It's just like a really ra a rare metal it, that we it's can on use. the. Yeah, I think it's like a periodic element, and it's it can't be like replicated by um, replicators. Uh, it has plot armor. I understand. Okay. <laughs> yes, and the the Ferengi specifically, uh, it's kind of ingrained in their culture that it's the most valuable substance. It's yeah. their it's their gold. Yeah. Oh, it's okay, suspended well, within gold. Is the, yeah, that's, yeah, that's why it's gold pressed. It's the bars are gold uh, and they just wrap it around the liquid. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yes, and so for the it Federation, gold, right? yeah, so smuggling of latinum is considered a crime. <laughs> so yes, uh, yes, I think the uh, there's a lot of uh, the Federation. Yeah, has something to say about uh, latinum refinery mm -hmm. refining. Well, let's let's go save those people first. And then we can get to drilling down in this whole, like, what are we going to do with this lady mm. business? Okay. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be much of a help, but I feel like I should come along as your commanding officer. You won't know what to do without me. So <laughs> let's get one of the shuttles. It'll be you, our best pilot. We have Stark, to. Um, he's always on point. He never is hallucinating or on LSD or anything. So he'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right now I'm like stumbling around like somebody just yeah. like made me do like five shots of tequila and <laughs> threw some LSD in on top of it. Yeah. And we'll want Becky because she's our emergency medical person. Mm -hmm. That's four of us in one of those shuttles, and we're getting. Can we get ten people in a normal shuttle? <laughs> I think. Um, let's see, because you're uh, modifying. Yeah, four four people with the. Uh, if you if you if they're modified to be submersible. So why don't you give me a uh, a point of momentum? We're getting six people to bringing them back up. <laughs> oh right, right. If you're gonna yeah, if you're gonna carry them, you can take two. Yeah, you can take multiple shuttles. Um, but uh, yeah, you can modify modify. Control. Okay. Yeah. So shuttles can be modified. Um, so they'll have to um, uh, be non-warp shuttles because the warp drive, yeah, would be too heavy for this kind of operation. You can also modify your suits uh, to uh, survive at the at these depth pressures. Modify your environment suits. So yeah, give me a point of momentum for that modification because it's kind of a. Uh... All right. Well, modify. Do we need to spend another one for a second ship? Uh, no, no, just just the one the one momentum will give you the modifications to your you know your regular equipment, and uh, here we go into high pressure environments again. <laughs> yes, high so, pressure. There's so going to be a whole society of latinum creatures down there. Stark, you're kind of stumbling around. Should like your second in command security guy come instead? If you're <laughs> if you're tripping over there, buddy. Uh, no, I'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, I'm a telepath, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm an Andorian. I can handle it. Yeah. He's, a, he's a rock. You let the lieutenant alone. He's licking the wall. Look at him lick that wall. <laughs> I don't know if he's the best thing we've ever seen right now. Yeah, slightly <laughs> disoriented, that's all. Where did he get the straw hat and sunglasses from? <laughs> all right. So we're we're, we're going to make... We're going to get two ships. We'll have me... Becky and Chamberlain and one. No, wait. We'll have Becky, Chamberlain, and Stark and one, and me, Seki, and that's it. And the other one. <laughs> oh, the, all right. The, the, the couple's crap. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll, we'll have Mendez. We, we need another good pilot. <laughs> oh, Mendez will pilot that. Uh, we'll yeah, have two good three. All right. Two good pilots. <laughs> All right, Mendez, I'm calling the pipe. You just follow me. <laughs> All right. Cool. I, yep. Put me with a doctor. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I took a doctor in each, but yeah, it's 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 you and a uh, Chamberlain and Becky in one, and then me and the other doctor and Mendez in the other. Hmm. That works. We're good. All right. 
Oh, they both have emergency biology. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Good, good. Okay, so um, yeah, once the uh, and it took it did take about an hour actually to get the modifications that you needed. Um, so yeah, you're you're down to roughly about three hours yeah. from uh, Stark's estimate of uh, mm-hmm. the time it takes to. Uh, so you said if we spin a momentum, we can have that. Can oh we, sure, uh, yeah, take yeah. a half hour off because we're. Oh sure, yeah, 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 if, yeah. If you want to rush it, sure. Oh. Yeah, go ahead. I don't want everyone to. I spent a point of momentum. We're down to two. It's only thirty minutes. Twenty-eight, yeah, minutes, we need, 28 minutes. We need to get Come down on. there before their life signs fade all the way. Right. right. <laughs> all right. Enough. That means dead. Just so we're all on the same page Fine. with. I don't want to find six dead people down there. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yes. So the um, uh, the seas. Oh, yeah. Let me give you a shot of this uh, real quick. So the um. Unlike this image, the seas are um, noticeably more calm than when you arrived. So when you arrived, the uh, uh, waves are kind of crashing against the uh, the edges of the island and uh, uh, a, a little more turbulent. Uh, things have calmed down as you take the uh, the shuttles below to uh, to recover these missing workers. So uh, and and Lishka. Uh, it, uh, uh, communicates to your shuttle. She uh, expresses her appreciation. Uh, uh, thank you so much for uh, this assistance. Uh, please, uh, please let me know uh, what you find and uh, if there's anything we can do to uh, uh, assist you uh, upon your return. So you you follow uh, the the area has been pinpointed. The the trench uh, that. Uh, you found the life signs and it's been pinpointed. So you take the shuttles down. Uh, the the seas are calm. There's no real reason. I mean, if you want to make a piloting roll to generate momentum, I guess that's probably not a bad idea. Heck but, yeah. But yeah, you don't need... Hey, to... uh, no yep. showboating, okay? People's <laughs> lives are in danger. We're in the in a <laughs> deuterium-enriched ocean. <laughs> yes. okay? we're, we're literally flying ships in an ocean made of rocket fuel. So let's not... <laughs> Which Which is not exactly why I think it should be a role for daring. (laughs) Yes, yes, definitely. Do some daring. And small craft focus. Yes. I dare you. (laughs) (laughs) I dare you. Uh, All right, Minda, just follow my lead. Oh, don't wow. do it, Mendez. Oh, oh my no. God. Don't do it, Mendez. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. I lead barrel roll. Ah! Well, you're, you're... I told you to fly passively. <laughs> wow, you're, you're saving me some uh, yeah, some threat here, so that's good. <laughs> All right. My competitive streak I hope the transporter guy in the ship is on standby. <laughs> All right, so you, you got a momentum from that because it was uh, difficulty zero. Woo-hoo. Add up, okay, I pay for it. <laughs> and um, as as the um, the complication, uh, what that does is so both Stark and uh, the commander and Ute um, have a very strange experience. So as you get closer to the bottom of this trench, uh, you see these amazing crystalline structures. Uh, these these very tall. Um, thin kind of crystals leaning out of the uh, uh, ocean floor and uh, both Ute and Stark uh, have this uh, sudden powerful flashback uh, from an event in their life. So think about the, um, so the first meeting or first encounter with uh, someone in your life that was the, uh, uh, that impacted you the probably the most significantly. So it could be like, First, a first contact experience, a first love, or maybe you know, the person that inspired you to enter Starfleet. So you're seeing that person. Um, uh, it's just for a few seconds, but it's this perfectly clear image of the first time that you met this person uh, in your life. So who would that be for you, uh, Ute? Uh, I think it would be. Uh, it would be a a, a like a, a girl I fell in love with in like you know when I was in Starfleet training originally. And then we got separated and we're like, we're going to get back together. And then we never, Oh, never like our, our paths have never crossed again. And we've just both kind of silently agreed that, that our lives are no longer together, but it's someone I still think about. I haven't come up with a name yet. Sarah. No, I, I don't know. I'll, <laughs> okay. I'll, but yes. Oh, good, good. And yeah, you feel, you feel that, that same feeling again. And also, uh, your, uh, empathetic, empathetic, uh, uh, 
sensation, you're feeling this this longing, this longing to to reach out and to uh, uh, you know communicate again, to to be you know reunited, to to uh, to talk to them uh, once again. So this this longing for uh, communication, longing for contact, you're feeling. Why haven't I contacted her? I mean, I have. I'm a, <laughs> I, I probably could run her down at this point. I imagine. Yes. Huh. <laughs> And how about uh, Stark? Uh, what what person uh, did you see in your in your reverie? It was my former captain. Mm, mm. So your first your first meeting with him. Yes. Uh, uh, excellent. All right. Excellent. So yeah, this this um, uh, this very strong uh, flashback happens. It only lasts for a few seconds. It leaves a lingering sense of unease. So uh, Stark will still have that uh, for the uh, level four complication, and now uh, Ute will have two. You'll have a level two complication uh, uh. Uh, for uh, any any actions, any tasks that you perform uh, for the for the rest of the uh, adventure. Well, I'll probably start looking through the Federation database right now and try. To- <laughs> I would have to wait until <laughs> after the death death defying mission that we're on. I can be distracted while we're underwater. It's not a problem. <laughs> yeah, you, could, you could message her now. Why, why not? Yeah, I, why not? I'll start composing. I'll, I'll do some test emails. You know, I don't want to... Uh, okay. All so, right. Like, I imagine like I'm asking the lieutenant for like uh, sensor readings and he's like totally zoned out for a minute. <laughs> yes, and, like, yes. Uh, uh, lieutenant, y- you okay? <laughs> All right, and so just as they're recovering from these these reveries, these visions of uh, of first meetings of uh, important people in their lives, uh, you arri- you arrive at the ocean floor. You see these structures, and then uh, this is the uh, the next thing that you see. So you're near, of course maybe not out of the <laughs> shuttle yet, but um, this is the type of structure that you see. So uh, at these depths underwater, you see these these large crystalline structures, and uh, at exactly the uh, the location that you pinpointed, you see uh, the shapes of the humanoid life forms uh, encased in uh, crystal, in kind of crystal cocoons themselves, uh, attached to one of the larger larger forms coming from the ocean floor. We're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> yes. So I think we can, uh, this would be a good place to stop. I think it'd be a good, uh, because it, it, uh, it'll only get crazier from here. Yes. So you, you just, you just had wait, some, wait, wait, wait. Uh, what? lock on photon torpedoes. <laughs> ah, yes. And then, then we cut. Yes. Yes. There, exactly. we go. there yeah. you go. <laughs> we don't think we have those on our shuttles. <laughs> uh Oh, Although torpedoes on shuttles would make sense, man. Mm. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. So no- underwater shuttles. Mm. Yeah. So it looks like there's no sign of any gear or anything. Uh, you can see, like, kind of through these crystalline cocoons, and they don't seem to be wearing any suits or anything. They're just in the, uh, you know, kind of their their underclothes of their uniform, encased in these uh, in these crystals. And we don't see any residue of like their ship or anything, right? Yeah, yeah. There's there's no sign of any any way that they got down here. How they, you know, what what they used to uh, survive at the depths or anything. Yeah, the submersible and all gear are just there's completely no sign of them. All right, so we can pick it up. We'll pick it up next week from there. So we have a good uh, a good starting cool. point. Cool. All right. Cool. Well, excellent. So, yeah, so everyone watching on the stream, thank you for watching. And we will be back next week, hopefully, uh, for the part two of a a cry from the void. Ah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So thanks for watching and see you next time. Goodbye. Bye. Adios. Shouldn't you say live long and prosper? That 